prevailing theory today is that there are two root causes of war on Earth. Conflicts between nations, conflicts between religions. The perceived solution is, well, let's just abolish nations and let's move into a new era of global governance. Let's get rid of the conflict among religions by bringing about some form of religious agreement on earth. So one world government, one world religion, we will have banished war from the earth and we can then have peace. Do we all worship the same God, Christian and Muslim? I think we do. Does. We have different routes of getting to the Almighty. Does Bin Laden, do, does uh, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi pray to the same God that you and I do? Uh, I think they pray to a false God, otherwise they wouldn't be killing uh, innocent lives like they have been. Ecumenism is simply the movement promoting unity among Christian churches or denominations. The effort to unify all Christians and all Christian denominations began in earnest with Vatican Council II in 1962. From that council called by Pope John XXIII, the Roman Catholic Church issued the call for all of her departed daughters, speaking to the Protestants, to come home. 1893, the first parliament of the world's religions was held in Chicago. Its stated goal was to cultivate harmony among the world's religions and spiritual communities and foster their engagement with the world and its guiding institutions in order to achieve a just, peaceful, and sustainable world. The religious leaders signed a declaration for world peace, number one, and they also established, this is probably more importantly, an International Advisory Council of Religious Leaders, a liaison between the religious leaders of the world and the political leaders of the world. The purpose was to engage religious leaders in promoting the plans of the world community or the one world government instead of working against them. What does the Bible tell us to do if this is what's happening in Christianity today? We need to return to studying our Bibles, not necessarily our religious books, humble ourselves in daily prayer, return to the pattern set by us for us in the book of Acts. Let's have a true end time Christian revival and let's do it together. America has been in a steep moral decline over the last 60 years. From the founding of our country in 1776 until 1960, it was a crime to commit a homosexual act in every single state in this nation. But 60 short years later, homosexual activity is no longer a crime in any state. Furthermore, in many states, it's now a crime to say anything against homosexuality. Several states have now mandated that homosexuality must be taught in their school's curriculum as a totally normal and accepted lifestyle. President Obama, when speaking before the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender Conference last year, said, You will see a time in which we as a nation finally recognize relationships between two men or two women as just as real and admirable as relationships between a man and a woman. You will see a nation that's valuing and cherishing these families as, as we build a more perfect union. A union in which gay Americans are an important part. I am committed to these goals, and my administration will continue fighting to achieve them. Our president said that. What a massive moral shift 
this nation has undergone. So, why has it happened? What has caused it? It has happened because our schools, our colleges, the media, and even our churches have been infiltrated with the propaganda of secular humanism. At the same time, the Judeo-Christian values that have made this country great have been crowded out and even mocked. So, can we recover the biblical values upon which the United States was built? Yes, we can. But how? The same way we lost these values, one class at a time, one message at a time, one article at a time, one radio program, one television program at a time, we have to start once again espousing biblical values. If we can get biblical moral values reinstilled in the hearts of the men and women of America, then we will be able to reclaim the greatness of America. Here's our plan. We are placing articles in our leaders' hands that will reinforce traditional American values, the things that have made this country strong. That's our Reclaiming America project. Furthermore, we want to place these magazines in the hands of the religious leaders of America. Many of our nation's preachers have lost their convictions. Consequently, they have quit being the moral voice of authority that they should be. The main reason our nation has lost its way morally has to be attributed to the pulpits of America. But this can be reversed. We can do this together. I am so excited that our federal politicians are receiving in Time Magazine every single issue. I look forward to the pastors of America being reinstilled with the conviction and the courage of the preachers that helped found this great country. We truly believe we can change America. How did the people of the first century church change their world? They filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. How are we going to change America and our world? We are going to fill America and our world with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's the world's only hope. And yes, it will work. Join our Reclaiming America project. There are three groups of seven found in the book of Revelation seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials. These make up the skeletal structure of the book of Revelation. The seven seals are the long story ending at Armageddon. The seven trumpets are the shorter story also ending at Armageddon. And the seven vials are the real short story ending at Armageddon. In 6,000 years of recorded human history, not one war, with one million dead. All of a sudden we have this great war, 8.2 million dead. Then, second trumpet, World War II, 52 million dead. One third of the ships destroyed. A great mountain burning with fire. Everything seemed to fit. And then of course, the third trumpet, Chernobyl. This is where God opened my understanding first. I mean, I had always been taught that all of the trumpets would exist in a final seven year period. But by that time, God had changed my mind because I, there's really no proof for that. That's a theory that's embraced, but it's not true. The fifth trumpet sounded in 1990, 1991. Now, do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm saying to you, in the Bible, it said a man by the name of Destroyer is going to unleash the oil fields, the bottomless pit, and the sun and the air will be darkened by reason of smoke. The kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ. His wrath has come, rewards given to the saints. This is the second coming of Jesus Christ. People who are dead, who have been born again, 
will be raised from the dead. And when all of us that are still on the earth serving God, we will be changed from mortal to immortality in the twink of an eye. Then we, we will be caught up together with the dead who have raised. Together we will meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Romans 8:11 tells us, if you want to be a part of the rapture, it says, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You want to make sure you receive the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost because that's the power that will raise you up in that last day. prophesies that a world government will be formed right before the second coming of Jesus Christ and the battle that all of us know of as the battle of Armageddon. If you don't believe the Bible's true, if you can understand Daniel 7, you will change your mind. In the last 50 years, out of all the cabinet members, Fully 50% of them or more have been members of this private club called the Council on Foreign Relations. No, it's not a governmental agency. Here's the big question. Why did our president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, put the words New World Order on our dollar bill? He knew what he was doing. This is the man that became the driving force behind the formation of the United Nations. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. Good a evening. World. Welcome to Way of Life and End Time Conference. We're so glad that you're here. What a privilege it is to have Dave Robbins and their team here. And I know we're going to hear some wonderful things tonight. Why don't we bow our heads and pray? Let's ask the Lord just to come into this place and uh, open our minds and our hearts for the Word of God tonight. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this great ministry. Lord, I pray that you would touch our minds and our hearts tonight, that we would receive everything that you have for us. Lord, I pray that you would let this, let this night be a transformation in our hearts and our minds. Lord, we want to be ready to meet you. Lord, and we thank you for the great outpouring that's going to happen between now and your coming. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone said amen. Why don't we clap our hands and praise to the Lord. We're glad to be here tonight. Amen. So good to have Dave Robbins here. God bless you. Test one. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. God bless each and every one of you. And you know me, and I'd like to get to know you. And perhaps we'll do that sometime down the road, if not before this evening's over with. And thank you for joining me in Hearst, Texas. And I want to say God bless to each and every one of you. And you've heard my father-in-law for many years. Some of you started listening back in 98. You've already told me that. And uh, it's very unique. I want to thank uh, Pastor Shindall for having us down here. Some of you, most of you probably know the story that we started out in Richmond, Indiana. And then we ended up down here in Texas 15 years ago in 2005. Irvin Baxter pastored a church for 33 years in Richmond, Indiana. Then he gave up the church uh, to a very well-abled gentleman that God called in there, and it was Pastor Shindall. And he's, from, he's originally from Texas, right over here in, in uh, Garland is where he was from. That's where the church that he came out of and went up to Richmond and took the church that we, that I was raised in, that Irvin Baxter had. 
So now here I stand all these years later in his church. He pastors his church here. And so i um, thankful to be with him this evening. And you guys might want to get to know him as well. If you're from this area looking for a good church, this is a wonderful church to attend. So if you're looking, that's great. Uh, if not, maybe down the road. You never know. So very important. This evening um, is going to be prophecy, but I have an ulterior motive. And this church is going to be holding an end-time Bible study. Because what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to be teaching through a very big timeline. It's nothing like you've ever seen before. We put it together just for this, this year's lessons. And I've never seen a timeline like it. We have some that are similar, but not exactly like the timeline that I'm going to be teaching through. And so it's very important that you understand these things. Because you say, well, ah, nobody knows the future. I don't know the future. But the Bible tells us what the future is. And I'm just going to teach you what the Bible says. So this is very, very important that you understand this. Well, so I'm going to teach through the timeline. And this is actually a two-part lesson. It's designed for me to teach Saturday night and Sunday morning. Well, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. So you guys are going to get the timeline tonight. But... You say, well, how are, we going to, how are we going to know where we're at on the timeline? How are we going to fill in all the gaps? This is very critical. This church has decided to do an end-time Bible study. And this is something that we do at all of our conferences, and it is the follow-up to all this. This is something that you will want to attend. It's going to start this coming Tuesday night at 730 and Brother Tony Williams from the church here is going to facilitate the Bible study. He's a wonderful Bible study teacher. And he's going to take you through our lessons. They're not going to charge you. Their church is going to do it for free. You'll meet here at the church at 730, starting this Tuesday night. And it's going to take you through all the things. Why? Because in the end time, there are some things that you absolutely must do. They're of eternal consequence. And there are things that you absolutely should not do that are of eternal consequence. There's do's and don'ts. The Bible gives us those in great detail. You say, well, I don't know what those are. As you go through this Bible study, you'll understand all that. A world government. They're trying to implement socialism in America right now. We have a globalist president. If you don't know that by now, you will before very long. Believes in a world government. He's all in. And he's trying to push us in that direction. All of the human-induced global warming, climate change you hear about... All of that stuff, that's all propaganda by the United Nations to pull us into a world governing body. Joe Biden is all in. Now, I don't know the man. I'm not judging him. I'm just telling you, this is his ideology. This is what's going on. And in his administration. I'm not getting political. I don't even, I could care less about all that. I'm just telling you, this is where we're at in America right now. This is something you will not want to be a part of. Number two, and I'll be talking about this, the world religious system. Most churches, even in America, are being pulled into this world religious system already. Interfaithism. You say, well, I don't know anything about that. I talk to people all the time, pastors, that did not know their church boards, their general boards, have already pushed them into that. The pastors didn't even know. I'm like, well, you, you, this is, it's, a, it's a major denomination here in the United States. And so they're not telling the lay people what's going on. They're finding out it after the fact. So this is something you, you're not going to want to be a part of because God is going to judge that entity in the end time. You say, well, I didn't know about all this stuff. That's what the Bible study is designed for. It's designed to show you these things and walk you through that. You say, I didn't know about a world government. I did a Bible study, just one of these Bible studies that you can attend on Tuesdays here at the church. I did one in New York, two blocks from Times Square. We started a church up there doing this. And... A lady attended the Bible study who worked at the United Nations, the seat of world government in the earth. She worked there. In, I think it was in the bookstore downstairs or something. And once I went through this, the first two lessons, modern nations in the Bible and world government, how those nations federalize, I'll be talking about that here in just a moment. She come to me and she said, I worked there. It was like eight or ten blocks from where we had the Bible study. She said, I, I, I want to quit my job. That's the seat of world government. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold up. It's not, she said, I didn't have a clue what, they, what that thing was designed to be. And I said, well, you know, don't quit your job right now. It's not, the, the, the Antichrist hasn't taken over and everything, but there will come a time when he does. At that point, you may want to opt out of it. But I said, at this point, you know, um, 
It's, it, it's just the United Nations, quote unquote. She didn't, it's not a full on world government yet. That's what they're pushing for. So what I'm saying is, is that she had no clue and she worked there. So most people don't know about this stuff. So that's why it's important that you attend these studies. All they're wanting to do is to take you through these prophecies, which I will, there's no way I'd have time to do all that tonight. It's an hour. It's about an hour and a half on every Tuesday night, 730. John, sitting back here, has been through many of these. He, goes, he comes to my one that I do at the End Time Television Studios every Thursday night. Well, they're going to do it here on Tuesday night. It's a place that you can gather close to your home, and you can attend this. It's going to be something like you've never been through in your life, and you'll really enjoy it. So here's what we want to do. Everyone has an envelope. Grab your envelope. Pull it out. I want to go through it really quick with you because I'm going to collect these, and I want to give you something free tonight. Inside the envelope is some brochures. You can take them home with you. I'm going to be collecting the envelope. But these are some things that are out there on the table. The Jerusalem Prophecy College, a lot of different things that we offer. The most important thing Irvin Baxter ever wrote is a brochure called What Do You Mean Born Again? This is the plan of salvation that Jesus Christ purchased on Calvary. Years ago, Irvin Baxter wrote this 40 plus years ago. We've sent millions of these out. We've sent them into prisons. We've sent them everywhere, all over the world. Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, except a man is born again, he can't enter or see the kingdom of God. Boom. That's the core of the whole issue. You've got to be born again. He said, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Well, I have talked to pastors and people for years now. Irvin Baxter has talked to them for decades and he said, he had talked to people that said, hey, I'm born again. And he said, well, give me your definition of being born again. And you would not believe how many different definitions Irvin Baxter received over the years. And he thought, oh, my goodness, I need to write a brochure telling people how to be born again. Because, again, Jesus said, unless you've done this, you can't make it. And so he wrote this brochure that we're going to give you tonight. It's in the pack. Take it home with you, read it. It's probably a 20-minute read, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And make sure that you have done everything to make it in. There's nothing more important than this. And so it's of utmost importance. Now, also in the envelope, at the top, there's a place where you can partner with End Time. Most of you do, I think, or a lot of you do already. And... Um, it's end time is partner supported. We have radio, television bills, things like that. So if you'd like to support end time, you can do that up here, or you can go to endtime.com, uh, or just call one eight hundred end time one eight hundred three six three eight four six three. Number two, how many of you subscribe to End Time Magazine? Raise your hand. Okay, so probably five percent of you. That's about what I get just about every conference. And my father-in-law used to say that. It's uh, uh, required to subscribe to End Time Magazine to make the rapture. Okay, so, uh, wow, that would be, uh, so 5% of y'all are making it. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's a joke. Everybody relax. Um, but however, this magazine goes into, our partners have subscribed this magazine to every governor. Governor Greg Abbott gets it. Uh, DeSantis in Florida gets it. Every governor gets this. Every senator, uh, uh, President Biden will be getting a copy. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, uh, Sean Hannity, all the movers and shakers you hear about in the United States are subscribed to this magazine. They get it, and I know they read it because I've got response back from them. The only one that's ever in the White House or in Washington that's ever told us, Nancy Pelosi still gets hers every other month. The only one that's ever told us don't send any more of these. They sent us a letter was Paul Ryan. He used to be the Speaker of the House. They sent us a letter and said, don't send those magazines anymore. We still sent them, but we got the letter. And, and, but everybody else still gets them. I've got a friend of mine that when all the senators and House of Representatives, when all they go in and they get in their offices, they want their office remodeled. Every one of them, when there's a vote, they all go in new. They get their offices remodeled. The, a friend of mine who's been on tour with us a couple times, he goes in. His job is to go in and remodel the offices. He does all new woodwork, everything. And he has seen End Time Magazine laying on several of their desks over the years. And so this is one of the, it's the most widely read prophecy magazine in the world. We started it back in 91. We're just celebrating this year our 30th anniversary of End Time Magazine. And I'm thankful for that. And 
it, it, this will keep you up to date uh, on everything. It's, there's blood, sweat, and tears goes into all these magazines. One of the new things we started since my father-in-law passed away is I have a message from Irvin Baxter in every one of these. And I'm taking you through many of his messages that he taught over the years. I'm, I have uh, them transcribed and they're put in the magazine now. So it's something, we're going to have Irvin Baxter's voice in every magazine from here till the rapture. Once the rapture happens, there's no more magazine because I'm not going to be here. So it's very important. But if you'd like to subscribe to End Time, there's a place to do that on the magazine or on the uh, envelope. Again, I'm going to be collecting the envelopes here in a little bit. And one of the most important things here is uh, the, the free e-newsletter. So go down to uh, the, the bottom right hand. There's a few little sentences there. The top one says, I'd like to receive End Time's weekly email update. I'll need your email on here to do that. And we want to get your information. I'm not going to sell this to the United Nations or anything so they can track you. But when, you, when we have conferences, when there's a major uh, prophetic fulfillment, we want to send out emails and we want to get these things out to everybody. It's very important. I mean, if I knew the rapture was going to happen tomorrow morning, would you want to get an email? Okay. It's a joke. Everybody relax. It's Saturday night. Chill out. Because I, I don't know that. But... Um, uh, an important, something important that's coming. Hey, uh, don't take the vaccine or, uh, you know, anything like that. An email blast. If I've got your email, I can let you know. But if I don't have it, there's no way to let you know. Also, um, the second one, the red sentence at the bottom. I want to join an end time Bible study. Check the box and come and join the Bible study. This is the most important thing that you will hear tonight. I want to go through the end time Bible study. Again, I'm going to have to go through, I'm fixing to go through 40 slides in under two hours. So I'm going to hit fifth gear real quick. And I'm going to be really moving through a lot of material, but if you join the Bible study, you'll come in here, much more relaxed atmosphere, and you can get modern nations in the Bible, world government, how those nations will federalize. These are 2,000 to 2,500 year old prophecies coming to pass right now. And it'll really help build your faith in the Word of God, and it'll let you know what's going on in the world. You don't have to guess what's really going on. What's the deep state? What's the establishment? You're going to know that as you go through these Bible studies. It will change the way you watch TV, what you, your news that you're going through, how you get your information. What you you know you can uh, pick and choose the good stuff and find out what good resources are on the internet instead of just guessing. Is this guy telling me the truth or not? Well, the Bible is what we're going to go by. And it will tell you these things. So you've got, to, if you go through these Bible studies, it will help you understand. And if you, if you don't go through them, then you're just picking and choosing. You're walking around in a fog. I really don't know, you know, is this, should I watch that news site? Well, no, that, they're not telling the truth. That's all propaganda. I need to be watching this one. So everybody here is wanting to know more. You want information. Everybody's seeking and searching. Well, we stick to the Bible like super glue. We do not move off of that. And it helps me know which news sources. Most of my news sources are from overseas. Most of my news sources are not here in the United States. I get most of my news from overseas sources that will tell you what's going on in the United States without this uh, bought and paid for uh, agenda that they're trying to push. Most of the, most of the 90% of the news sources here in America are the media, TV, all this stuff is owned by like five corporations and they're all agenda driven. So the other 10%, that's why End Time gets um, censored so much. We've had over 200 videos censored by them. Radio programs and all these different things, because they don't want you knowing the truth. They want you dumbed down in America to where they can push an agenda, and you're like, well, okay, I've just got to take it. So that's why these Bible studies will help open your eyes to this stuff, and you say, no, I can't do that. That's, that's, that's moving us towards a world government. That's moving us towards a world religion. This is precursors of the mark of the beast. So that's why it's imperative. I've done, we've got these Bible studies going on all over the world. They're going on in Europe, Australia, all over the place. Because people want to know what's going on. So you can join the Bible study. It starts this Tuesday night at 7.30 right here. And this church is going to walk you through that. Uh, Tony Williams has done this many times. And you guys will really, really, really enjoy it. Okay? So check the box. I want to join an end time Bible study. And put your information there. And I'll collect these envelopes here in a little bit. Okay? Very important. Okay, so let's get started. The future according to Bible prophecy. 
So I don't know the future. I don't either. I know what Bible prophecy says. And that's very important that we go through these things because the Bible says that during the end time that they that do know their God, during the time of the Antichrist, they that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. I've had people tell me, nobody knows the, the prophecy of the Bible. Nobody can understand all that stuff. Well, it's about 30% of the entire Bible. So if we can't ever understand that stuff, there's 30% of the Bible, we might as well rip out and throw in the trash, right? What's it in there for? Well, God knew that people would come along in the end time that he would choose to reveal these prophecies to. If you understand uh, the magazine you have in your, uh, that I laid on the seats before we got here, before you got here, that's a tribute to my father-in-law. And uh, of course he passed away November 3rd. That's the tribute issue that we did for Jan Feb. And it goes through his, uh, the prophetic ministry that God pulled him into and miraculously shows you how God showed him these prophecies, the interpretation of these things. It was miraculous many times. God would wake him up in the morning and say, hey, go buy a newspaper. Him say, well, why do I need to do that? Go buy a newspaper. One of them was in uh, Starks, Louisiana. If you've ever been through there, you blink your eyes and you made it through and you didn't even see the town. It's like that. He was teaching a, a, a revival down there one time. God said, Irvin, get up, go buy a newspaper. He went and asked the lady at the hotel. He said, uh, where can I go buy one of these? And she said, honestly, I don't know. There's a cafe down there. He went down there, bought a paper. He pulled it out. And he was trying to figure out who the leopard was in Daniel 7. And he pulls out the newspaper and it said that leopard, uh, um, Germany sells the leopard tank to the Netherlands. And he was like, oh my goodness, the leopard's Germany. And then we, found all, have, we have found several other proofs throughout time. So God miraculously revealed these things to Irvin Baxter. And that's what we teach every day on the radio, on Daystar, TCT, all the other television networks. Uh, that's what we put in our magazine. And I've sent the magazine to, uh, like I say, every, all the heads of state, all the different things. And Senator Jim, James Inhofe from Oklahoma he sent me a, a signed copy of his book because I was talking about the Pope's global agenda and that he was pushing a world government through all this climate change stuff. And Senator James Inhofe sent me this big um, official business of the U.S. Senate. And I thought, oh, man, I, did, I said something wrong on the radio. I'm going to have to testify before a Senate uh, committee. And uh, he said, no, thank you for telling the, having the courage to tell the truth in the midst of all this because this is exactly what's happening. Now, he's totally secular. He's not a prophecy teacher. But he recognized what I wrote in that article was the absolute truth, that the Pope is pushing a global governing agenda. That's exactly what he's doing with this human-induced global warming propaganda that comes out of the United Nations. And so um, how do I know all that? Bible prophecy. So the future according to Bible prophecy, this is not my opinion. This is scripture, and I'm going to give you scripture for everything I say tonight because I want you to know we just didn't pull this out of a hat. It comes right out of the Bible. Okay, so very important. Here we go. So the first one, world government. Revelation 13, verses 1 through 3. John said, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. Now, what are we doing here? We're building a timeline. And when I, when I get to the end, I'm going to show you the timeline. But these are things that we're going through right now. I, I, we've never started a timeline like this before. We always started with the final seven years and then took off and went to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And that's pretty much where we stopped the timeline, the final seven years. You've heard us teach the lesson uh, from here to Armageddon, the final seven years one. Okay, I wanted to be a whole lot more detailed than that. I wanted to take you from now to eternity. That's where I'm going to take you tonight. And so... What's happening right now is, is that we are in a world government, but there will come a time when that becomes the kingdom of the Antichrist. And I want you to know about it because you, do not want to, you don't want to participate in this. There's some things you absolutely cannot participate in in the end time. They're of eternal consequence. And so the first one is a world government. Revelation 13, 1 through 3. John said, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his ten horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. So in Daniel 7, Daniel saw four beasts. He saw a lion with eagle's wings, a bear, a four-headed leopard, and a ten-horned beast. And he said that these beasts represent kingdoms 
and, uh, and nation, or nations and the leader of those entities and, um, and that they would be on the earth at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. So most of you probably already know what we teach. The lion, Great Britain, modern nations, the eagle's wings that were plucked out of the lions of the United States, the bear is who? Russia, Russian bear. <coughs> the leopard, the four-headed leopard's Germany. You'll learn that in the first lesson of the Bible study Tuesday night. And the ten horn beast is the revived Holy Roman Empire or the current European Union. Okay? That was Daniel chapter 7. That was when, uh, written back when uh, Daniel was in Babylonian captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. 650 years later, John writes this scripture here, this uh, these passage here, Revelation 13, 1 through 3. And John said, and I saw a beast. Um, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. So Germany is going to be involved, right? He said, and it had feet as the feet of the bear. Russia is going to be involved. It had the mouth as the mouth of the lion. Great Britain is going to be involved. And then uh, the Bible says, and the dragon, who's the dragon? It's not China. The dragon is Satan, Revelation 12, 9. And the Bible says the dragon gives this entity its seat, power, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded unto death and the deadly wound was healed. You'll find out in the Bible study that that is the tearing down of the Berlin Wall. And um, Irvin will tell you how God miraculously showed him that prophecy. And then the Bible says, and all the world wondered after this beast. This beast, these nations are federalized. These beasts are federalized into one world governing body. John saw a world government that would be formed just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. That world government is being formed as we speak. The second lesson of the Bible study will teach you that the modern nations have federalized into one world governing body. And anybody who is a globalist believes in a one world government today, they are pushing this. The establishment today in America is trying to put the United States into a one world governing body. And you understand um, the Council on Foreign Relations. You've heard of these. The Brookings Institute. The Federal Reserve has nothing to do with the government. That's a private group of individuals that controls the money, the economy in America. But they have nothing to do with the federal government. There are private groups of individuals that are trying to pull America into a one world government. This is the same world government that John prophesied about 2,000 years ago. We're way off into that. We're coming to the culmination of all this, you understand. And I'm not standing up here trying to sensationalize to try to scare you and get you to go home and not be able to sleep tonight. That's not what I'm doing. These are facts. These are boots on the ground. And I'm telling you, this is what's happening. We're way off into world government. I wish I had time to go into this in great detail. All I'm going to do tonight is build you the timeline. The Bible study is going to fill in all the gaps. It's going to show you how this stuff is coming to pass in intricate detail. World government. The you've heard of the establishment. Uh, President Trump fought against the establishment, the deep state, the swamp. The swamp's part of this. But why are, they, why are they not wanting to protect our borders down south? Because the world government is against borders. <coughs> they are borderless. They're for borderless world. They want to create a one world state that answers to a world government. That's what they want. So they don't want nations protecting their borders. Europe is the model for world government on the earth today. You understand. They are pretty much borderless. They're, you can drive. You don't need a passport to go from one nation to the other. From France to Germany and all over Europe. Because they're the model of one world government in the earth today. Well, that's why people that some people who are for protecting our borders, anti-world government, people that are against protecting our borders, they are pro-world government. It's globalism. It's the move towards a world government. It's happening on so many fronts, the propaganda of human-induced global warming, which leads to climate change, that's the move towards world government. They're trying to suck all of us in. All that is is for wealth redistribution from the developed nations to the underdeveloped nations. It's World Government 101. The move, <coughs> the, the move off of cash in, onto a digital platform is world government. It's all headed. There's entities that work right with the United Nations to get the governments of the world to transform from cash to 
digital. They want you all on a digital platform because I can control you real easily if you're on a digital platform. Cash, I can't track you. But on a digital platform, I can control everything you do. I can keep you from getting your funds if I want to. And that's what's going to happen in the near future. The next thing, world religion. So the world religious system is being formed right now. All of these huge interfaith meetings that they're having, they're trying to establish a world religious system. The Bible tells us it's going to happen. Revelation 13, 1 through 2. You understand Revelation 13 is Satan's chapter in the end time. God is exposing Satan's effort in the end time to create a world governing body, his world empire, a physical kingdom here on the earth. That's Satan's effort. Remember the Bible says that Satan, the dragon, gives it its seat, power, and its great authority. This is, what, this is what's going on in the world. <clears throat> Revelation 13, 11 through 12, the Bible says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And so the first beast, world government, Antichrist. This beast here, the Bible says he had two horns like a lamb. When you think about the lamb in the Bible, who do you think about? The lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, Jesus Christ. Well, the Bible says this thing had, this um, beast had two horns like a lamb, but he speaks like the dragon. Who's the dragon? Satan. So he looks like a religious individual, but he's got a very deceptive message. And he's trying to establish a world governing body. The Bible says he exercises all the power of the first beast, the world governing beast. And he causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. What's the reason that they're trying to create a world religious system today? Just to get everybody in unity and get everybody to get along, right? That's not, that's not it. This is why you need to come to the Bible study. Because they're going to show you. You'd say, well, man, the, 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 the interfaith movements and all these unity movements of all these churches going together, regardless of their doctrines, they're all sweeping their doctrines under the rug and just everybody going to these big meetings and get, trying to get along. That's not what it's all about. Robert Mueller, who was the assistant secretary general to several secretary generals of the United Nations, was on our radio program, and he told my father-in-law, he said, Irvin, we've got this world-governing body as far as we can politically we need to get the religions of the world on board to make sure. Because what happens is, in times of crisis, a religion will turn to its deity. Whether it's Jesus Christ or Buddha, Muhammad, whoever. They'll turn to their deity in times of crisis. The world governing body, they don't like that. In times of crisis, they want you turning to the world government. The world government has the answers. And so... When, you, when we're trying to form this world religious system, you say, well, my church is getting caught up in that. That's something you cannot be a part of. God's coming back to judge this. Revelation 17 and 18 are two parenthetical chapters in the book of Revelation where God is showing the judgment of this entity. You can't be a part of that. And so it's of utmost importance that you understand there's a world religion being established right now and a lot of evangelical churches in the United States. If I had time, I could, oh, we could go into so much detail over this because I've, I've got people that I know that when we went on tour, they told us our churches is doing this stuff. And they started bucking against their churches and the church almost pretty much said, well, if you don't want to be a part of this, you can just, you can move on. And these people were shocked out of their mind. They've been going there their whole life. And so, very, very important that you understand these things. A world religious system, something you will not want to be a part of in the end time. Because it's not based on the truth. It's based on a lie. Because Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven. There's not even two. There's one way. And so... These people are saying, do you know they invite Wiccans, which are witches, and warlocks, and people that worship the sun, the moon, and the star, and believe in thousands of gods. And they're all saying, you know what? Somehow or another, we're all going to make it. That's a lie. I can't, as a man of God, stand in a pulpit and say there's two or three or four or five ways to make it. Can't do that. There's a lot of movie stars, all kinds of people that are saying, oh, there's, there's a plethora of ways to make it to heaven. No, 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 no. So... We want to know, how do I make it to heaven? That's the number one goal here. I want to get my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
That's of utmost importance to everybody sitting here. We can talk about all kinds of stuff, but I like to pull away all the layers of the onion and say, okay, tell me what, what, what are you really trying to tell me? And so the Bible prophecy lets us know that we're just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ uh, and the battle of Armageddon, and I've got to get myself ready. There's something I need to be doing. So the mark of the beast, this is the third thing in the Revelation chapter 13 in the Antichrist's system. He's creating a world government, and he's going to work with the world religious system to get people on board with the world government. I just read an article today where Pope Francis is promoting the world governing system. He's done that. They, the popes have done that for decades, you understand, ever since Vatican II. They've all called for a world governing body. There's, this is the grand design behind all of this, everybody. And so very, very critical. So the mark of the beast, what, this is why they're wanting to move us off of cash and onto a digital platform. The Bible says there will come a time when everybody's given their own unique identification number. And without that, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. Revelation 13, 16 through 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell. They're going to economically sanction you save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So if I can get you, everybody in here, dependent upon a number to function in society, I can control you with a noose easily. If you're, if you're on a cash platform, I, it's, it's freedom. But if I can get you dependent, I'll be honest with you, most of my purchases are done on a debit card. But every time I swipe my debit card, somebody's tracking it somewhere. Every, every time. You, if you ever go to get gas and you didn't have enough money on your credit card, you swipe it and it says invalid funds. Well, how does that gas pump know that I've got invalid funds? Because it's linked somewhere to a database that says, nope, Dave Robbins only has X amount of money. He can't buy gas today. So that's why they're wanting to move us off of a cash platform onto a digital platform platform. There are many countries. Sweden is one of the main countries in the world today that's moving off completely off of cash and moving on to digital. Okay. So this is the precursors to the mark of the beast system that's being established in the earth. There are other things. The, the COVID-19 situation with these passports and all these different things, mandatory vaccines around the world. Is that the mark of the beast? No. It's, it's societal conditioning. The government can tell you exactly what you have to do. You have to put this uh, whatever, whether it's a vaccine, poison, I don't know. I'm just saying that you have to put this in your arm. This is, they're, they're, this, these are things where it's societal conditioning that you have to do whatever the government says, right? And so there are some things in the future you can't do. It's against my Religion, I cannot do this. I can't, I will never let anybody put a mark of identification on my person anywhere. And I will never pledge allegiance to the Antichrist or his world governing system. You cannot do that. That's of eternal consequence. The Bible tells us everyone who does that will spend eternity in the lake of fire. I didn't make that up. That's the scripture. So I want everybody in here when that trumpet sounds, your feet leaves the ground. That's the goal. And so this is something you cannot do. And so it's very detailed and I know we're, it's getting right down where the rubber meets the road. But um, I got to tell you the truth. This is not propaganda. This is the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So I want to know the truth tonight. And so that's why you got to know that what your good, your news sources, everything, you've got to make sure that those people are telling you the truth. But if you don't understand what's going on behind the scenes, people can fill you with a big line and you'll buy it hook, line, and sinker. You've got to know the truth. So that's what we're doing. Uh, and that's why, the, that's why I push the Bible studies. Again, I've got these Bible studies going on all over the world. i got Bible study teachers from around the world that text me during their Bible study. Dave, uh, what about the Holy Roman Empire? What about this? And I'll shoot them the answer right back because... We are trying to teach people. The Bible says during the end time that they that understand among the people shall instruct many. My father, we are understanding the end time Bible study, the DVD series that these guys will be teaching. We named that after this verse and we put that verse on my father's tomb, my uh, father-in-law's tombstone. They that understand among the people shall instruct many. We also put, get this, my mother-in-law put 1-800 end time 
and www.endtime.com on his tombstone. So he will be, he will be pushing End Time Ministries for eternity. <laughs> so yeah, it, that's all. I love it. When I heard that, I'm like, oh man, that's going to be awesome. I'm going to have that on the front of the magazine when it comes out. They're fixing to set it in about a couple weeks here. So it's going to be neat. Uh, yeah, I, and I'm, I know he would have want that. Um, so, okay, Mark of the Beast. Next. Now, we're, start, we're building a timeline. So if you're taking notes, uh, you can take notes on the things I say, but when we get done, I'm going to have a giant timeline here that you can take pictures of. So it's going to be neat. And then you'll know what's coming in the future according to Bible prophecy. So there, this sixth trumpet war, the Bible says World War III is coming. There's been a World War I, there's been a World War II, there's going to be a World War III. There's not one-tenth of one percent chance that it won't happen. There will be a war coming in the very near future that will kill one-third of the world's population. Revelation 9, verse 13 through 16. The Bible says, then the sixth angel sounded. Now you understand, you say, well, why are we talking about this tonight? Because you'll learn in these Bible studies at the seven trumpets lesson, the first five trumpets have already occurred. You do understand that the majority of prophecies concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ have already occurred. You understand that? We're, 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 I'm not guessing, are we in the end time? Let me see. Are we in the end time? No. We're way off into the end time. And I know that because this is one of the ways we prove that. The first five trumpets, the skeletal structure of the book of Revelation, seven seals, trumpets, and vials, the first five trumpets have already occurred. Those are done. Those, have occurred, those are a 2,000-year-old prophecy. They've occurred within just the last over 100 years. They started in 1914. And the first five of them have clipped off in just over 100 years now. There's only two left. There's this sixth trumpet war. Then there's the seventh trumpet. You know what happens at that one. We're out of here. There's two left. And so the sixth trumpet war. The Bible says, Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound in the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for an hour a day, a month, and a year, were released to kill a third of mankind. And some translations say a third of all the population of the earth. And the Bible says, now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million, and I heard the number of them. So what do we know from this prophecy? Well, in the Sixth Trumpet War, World War III, that the war will start from the Euphrates River region. Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran house the Euphrates River. Starts in Turkey, and it ends up in the Persian Gulf down by Iran and Iraq. It's the last 60-mile border there. So we know, so and when I get on the radio and I'm talking about um, here's what's going on with Iran and Israel, Iran, the United States, uh, Iran and China, pulling this 200 million men army in there, you know why I'm doing that all the time. Now, I understand about China and Taiwan and Russia and Ukraine and everything else going on, but why do we watch this so closely because the Bible says this is where the war is going to emanate from. This is where it will start. And I actually, you understand that China just signed a 25-year military economic pact with uh, Iran. The, no, imagine this. The number one state sponsor of terrorism on the planet is trying to get a nuclear weapon. And China signs a 25-year a economic military pact with them. They're the number one state sponsor of terrorism on the planet. Now, why would you do that? Because you don't have a very good agenda behind what you're doing either, do you? I mean, come on. And, you know, if you set, to, you set your course by who you make, or you make your friends with, right? The people you hang around. I mean, who, you, would you want to be buddies with Iran? I'd like to see Iran have a, a revival and everybody be saved. But their government is some pretty dastardly deeds. Let's just face it. Dastardly devils. They are, they would love, they want to annihilate Israel and drive her off into the Mediterranean Sea and they'd like to wipe out the United States. They call Israel little Satan and they call the United States big Satan. And they've said many times we'd like to wipe all of them off the planet. 
So this is why we watch this so much. The war is going to start from the Euphrates River region. When the smoke clears, one-third of the world's population will be destroyed. It's, it's the Bible. I just read you. Revelation 9, verse 13 through 21. What's the most volatile region on the planet tonight? The Euphrates River region. And so we watch this very closely. It appears, many people believe, there's a guy named Abramowitz that just wrote a huge article recently that said it appears that we're already in World War III. It just hasn't escalated to the point where we have mass casualties because Iran has really been at war with Israel and the United States for over the last 40 years now because they have been, they want to implement their version of Sharia law around the world and they see Israel and the United States as the main opponents of that. So they're saying, we, we would love to just wipe them off. Well, imagine that those individuals getting a nuclear weapon. Now, this is going on in your news today. So you understand why Israel has said, there's no way. There is no way we're going to, we, we would go to war tomorrow morning if they got a nuclear weapon. And under President Trump, Trump pulled us out of the nuclear deal, the JCPOA, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, pulled us out of that. Because he said, the sunset clauses are going to allow them to get a nuclear weapon anyway. Well, that's why it was such a big deal with the Republicans. Now, I'm not getting very political. I'm just telling you what's going on. You, I love you if you're Democrat, Republican. I don't care about that. I'm telling you what's going on right now. The Republicans were such up in arms because President Biden, when he came in, he said, hey, we're going right back into the JCPOA, which has sunset clauses. In other words, it's going to end allowing them to get a nuclear weapon and pulling the sanctions off. Trump pulled us out of it and started hammering them with sanctions, crippling their economy. And it was working. And now Joe Biden has said, we're going right back into that. And that's what they're negotiating right now. Uh, and it, it, it's a real mess. So as a result of this, one third of the world's population is going to be destroyed. There's going to be an army of 200 million soldiers that participate. There's only three entities on the planet that can field an army of 200 million soldiers. China, the Islamic faction, and then um, India. So one of those three will participate in this war. That's why, you know, is India going to come into the Middle East and try to take over? I don't know. I mean, it's, I'm speculating. Or it, it appears the Islamic faction will play a role in it. But that's why I've always tried to tie China in with them. And now they just signed this 25-year pact. And you understand China, other than this, if, it's, if it is talking about this in this 2 million men, 200 million men army, that China is not mentioned in the, in the prophecies of the Bible. It's possible that she could be wiped out or the majority of her wiped out in this. And so I hate to even talk about it because you're talking about mass casualties. I'm talking about, what, 2.5, 2.6 billion, with a B, billion people. And this will be the entrance ramp for the Antichrist. He's going to come in on a platform of peace, have the answers to everything. And the Bible says most of the world will follow after him. And so this is something, when we talk about these Bible studies that are coming up, they're going to show you how not to be a part of this. That's why it's so critical. We've got so many, I've got, I don't know, we've got hundreds and hundreds of them going on literally around the world. And so um, that's why I push them so hard because you, if you're just following your nightly news, folks, oh man, you're, you're getting sold many bills of goods, not just one. And so you've got to really be careful what you ingest because what you, what you believe, that sets your direction. That's which way you'll go. And so you've got to be very, very careful. So next, now, the next two things. God gives us a timeline from the Old Testament prophets to the book of Revelation chapter 22. There's a huge timeline that God's given us. Most of those prophecies are already passed. All the messianic prophecies, everything that has to do with prophecy, that's already done. There's a little bit left, and then the second coming is going to occur. Then we'll have the 1,000-year millennial reign. You'll see that on the timeline here in just a moment. The next two prophecies to be fulfilled is this war and the peace agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians. When this peace agreement is signed, the Bible says that it will start the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ. I'm not setting that date. The Bible sets that. Let's listen. Daniel 9, 27, the Bible says, And he, which is referring to the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant, which is Israel's right to exist in the Middle East. Talking about the Abrahamic covenant, not the Abraham Accords, the Abrahamic covenant where God promised Abraham the promised land back in Genesis 15, 18. 
He will confirm the covenant with many for one week. This is a week of years. It's going to be a seven-year period. Okay? And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. The overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. So, there's a lot in that. And it would take me a while to explain it. I'm not going to take time because we're actually behind time already. But, what do we know because of this? Number one, the final seven years to Armageddon will begin when this peace agreement that has the five biblical characteristics is signed. There have been other peace agreements signed that did not have that. The Y River Accords, all these different ones, Camp David. No, those weren't the ones. They did not have those five characteristics to the prophesied peace agreement. When a peace agreement is signed in the near future, not Abraham Accords. The Abraham Accords didn't have those five characteristics. This is going to be specifically between the Palestinians and Israelis. Once that's signed, the final seven years to the second coming of Jesus Christ and the Battle of Armageddon will have started. And a Palestinian state is going to be created in the West Bank. We know that because of uh, Matthew chapter 24 uh, where Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation, let them which be in Judea flee. That's the modern day West Bank. He was talking to us. And that's why End Time Ministries is going to be involved in the door knocking campaigns and sending the magazines to every home in Israel once this final seven years starts. All that stuff's still going to happen. Uh, we're already dealing with people in Israel to make it happen. So we're not just talking about this stuff. We're going to do something about it. This, you understand this is a New Testament prophecy. Somebody has to warn them. They don't even believe, they don't even follow the New Testament. So somebody's got to warn them. Jesus, the Bible said back in um, Daniel that during the end time, they that understand among the people will instruct many. We believe God, this is one of the things God has called us to do, is to help save these Jews because there's going to be a mass slaughter. And many of them realize and believe that there's going to be a future Jewish Holocaust. The Bible says there will be. There's going to be another Jewish Holocaust. And we're going to help try to save as many Jews out of that as we can because the Bible says that in the end time, all of Israel is going to be saved when the, the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled at the second coming. So all of the Jews that have made it through the uh, battle of Armageddon and the great tribulation, they're going to be saved in the end time. So I want to see people saved. So I'm going to help them. Um, and, then, and then the final one, the Jews in Judea will be allowed to stay. Once the two-state solution is created, you heard about that a million times in the news. The Jews in Judea would be allowed to stay out there as a Jewish minority under the new Palestinian government. These are going to be the result of this peace agreement that's signed. Okay? Now, one of the things I have to tell you, though, is that on this timeline we're building, and you'll see this once I show you at the end, we do not know which one happens first, the, third trump, the, the Sixth Trumpet War, World War III, or the peace agreement. I cannot tell you scripturally which one happens first. It's always been our opinion that the war would happen first, then the peace agreement would get signed and we would move off into the final seven years. However, I cannot prove that scripturally. I, again, that's opinion on our part. Um, it's highly unlikely to us that you would sign a peace agreement, Israel starts to build a third temple, and then World War III breaks out in the Middle East, right? That's a highly unlikely situation. Could it happen? Yeah, it could. Because Israel is not near the Euphrates River. I wish I had, if I, I need to put a map in here to show everybody, but Israel, a whole different thing. The Six Trumpet War is not the Battle of Armageddon. Those are two separate wars. Okay? And you'll learn that as you go throughout the Bible study. Okay, next. Um, so the Temple Mount is placed under a sharing arrangement. Because of uh, what happens with the peace agreement, and this has already been proposed, everybody. You understand. They proposed this actually many times. But the Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 through 2. Now, um, you guys helping me out here. The one on the left in the back, that's the one I'm on, right? Okay, very good. Uh, thank you. I know you told me that. I forgot. Revelation 11, 1 and 2, the Bible says, And there was given unto me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood and said, Rise, measure the temple of God. So in the end time, we know there's going to be a temple built. The Bible tells us that in great detail. I've had so many people contact me and say, No, they're never going to rebuild a third temple. They go to World War III tomorrow morning. No, yes, they will. Israel, because of this peace agreement, they're going to build a third temple on the Temple Mount without tearing down the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Okay? A lot of, and I've had Yehuda Glick. You've heard about him. He was a, a member of Knesset many times. He was the one that was shot 
five times by that terrorist right outside of one of the meetings where he talked at. He's a great friend of ours. I've talked to him. And I said, <clears throat> if they allowed you, if, they, if there was a peace agreement signed tomorrow that said you can build a temple on the Temple Mount, do you believe the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock would need to be torn down? He said, we believe that God would make a way to remove those um, pagan temples or something. I can't remember what he called them, but anyway, it was something like that in essence. He was trying to be nice. And, but he said, we believe God would remove that and allow us to build the temple. He said, however, in order for us to build our third synagogue, we call it temple, they call it a synagogue. In order for us to build a third synagogue, we would be willing to build it in the area north of the Dome of the Rock. There's like a 10 or 12 acre plot that's as flat as this platform. And he said, we would be willing to build it there without tearing them other two down. That's exactly what's going to happen because of this scripture. The Bible says, John was told, rise, measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein, but the court which is without the temple, leave it out, measure it not, for it's given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 42 months. This is the great tribulation, three and a half years. And the Bible, and uh, so what's going to happen? Or, well, so uh, moving on here, yeah, 42 months. So what's going to happen? Under the international supervision, the United Nations is going to be, or the uh, temple mount is going to be placed under international supervision, probably the United Nations, which was already proposed in the partition plan in 1947. They said, hey, we'll give Israel this little sliver of land. We'll give the Palestinians or the Arabs that were there in the land this little sliver, but we want to keep Jerusalem as an international city, shared, overseen by the United Nations. It's already been proposed many times. Well, so that's what's going to happen in the near future, and then Jerusalem will remain under Israeli control all the way to the end under this peace agreement. You understand when uh, President Trump revealed his peace plan in February of 2020, he actually said that Israel would, contrain, would retain control of Jerusalem all the way throughout an interim agreement. And the interim agreement wasn't in there, but they all know it's going to be an interim because everything's going to come down to Jerusalem. I just had an article here recently um, where Gantz, is the one who shared a, um, the government with Prime Minister Netanyahu after their third election. You know, they just had their fourth election in two years in Israel. Well, after the third, Gantz and Netanyahu shared. Gantz actually said that, hey, we can have a peace agreement and we, they can call their place a Palestinian state if they want. We'll just sign an interim agreement and decide on Jerusalem later. I've got an article that says that. That's exactly what the Bible says is going to happen. And so these things are being talked about as we speak, everybody. So is in the, and now I'm on, on my timeline that we're building. I'm into the final seven years to the second coming of Jesus Christ and the battle of Armageddon, okay? Again, I'm going to show you the timeline at the end. So what's going to happen? As a result of this peace agreement, Israel's going to be allowed to build her third temple. The temple's built during that first three and one half years. And with modern day technology, the, uh, they have told us that they could build it in about a year. And they can really, if you've ever seen anybody build anything, when we, I go to Israel twice a year, or we did until COVID hit. And you can go there on one trip in May, and they're building a road, and go back in October, and that thing's done. It's nothing like you see here in the United States where it takes seven years to build something. It is, these, they, when they get on something, it's, here we go. And the temple, they've said with modern day technology, you understand the holy temple is going to have USB ports and it's going to have an elevator and it's going to have all kinds of stuff. I've seen the blueprints. They've got to build it up to modern day code. But it's, it's, that's going to be weird, but hey, that's what they say is going to happen. It's going to have offices and all kinds of stuff and it's going to, that's going to be crazy to me. But anyway, it's got to be up to modern day code. But uh, they're going to build it within the first three and a half years of the timeline that we're building. Animal sacrifices will be resumed, just like they did in the Old Testament. That's one of the main reasons they want to build it. They believe that animals' blood should be shed for the atonement for their sin. They're still living under the law, you understand. And so, and then the Antichrist will come along at a certain time and cause those sacrifices to cease. Because he's going to believe that he is God. And he's the answer. Remember what I said that Robert Mueller said, hey, we need to get the religions on board because we want the religions looking to world government for the answers, not their deities. 
They don't like that. They can't control them. So they want to be able to control them, so they want to get them looking to world government for their answer. That's exactly what the Antichrist is going to do. He's going to say, you don't need these sacrifices. He's going to stand in the temple. He's going to claim to be God. I'll get to that in just a moment. So the Bible says that Daniel eleven thirty one, and arms shall stand on his part. They shall pollute the sanctuary of string and shall take away the daily sacrifice and shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. That's when the Antichrist will stand in the temple claiming to be God. What are we going through? A timeline. The future according to Bible prophecy. So the Jewish temple has begun. The Jewish temple has begun and people will know that we're on the brink of the revealing of the Antichrist. Why? Because End Time Ministries has been screaming it for decades now. When you see that temple, then you know you've only got a short period of time until the Antichrist is revealed. Now, he's alive on the earth today. He's an up and coming politician. He has to be. Everything's converging at the same time. He can't not be alive. He has to be. He's going to be a, a, a European politician that's coming to power. Is he in politics right now? I don't know. But he's going to come on the scene at some point. People's going to know that, hey, once the, once the temple's getting built, that we've only got a short period of time left till the Antichrist is going to come on the scene. So there's going to be an unprecedented level of Christians, and it will, it's going to be an urgency that will come in that says, oh my goodness, I've had people who have been backslidden out of church for years. And I've talked to them and said, when are you going to get back in church? And they'll say, ah, when I see that third temple being rebuilt, I'll, I might move back towards God. I'm like, that's crazy. I, you could be killed in a car wreck tonight. Amen. The Bible says this is the day of salvation. So if you've got a chance to become a part of a good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, don't, don't wait till tomorrow. You say, let's talk to somebody tonight. I, I need a good church. I, gotta be, I want to go to heaven. And so I'm not going to leave this until... I, I, I've had people tell me that. Ah, when that, they start building that third temple, I'll get back in. Nah, not me. You're playing Russian roulette with your soul at that point. You don't never, nobody, nobody's promised tomorrow. You understand? Nobody. The, I did an article here. I had a lot of people ask me, what happens after you die? What happens? I want to know what goes on. Like, I've never died. I don't know. And, um, they, and, but I did a huge program. I did what the Bible says, and uh, I did a big program on um, the afterlife. Everybody wants to know the afterlife. And so I, uh, I looked at the obituaries the day I did the program, and there were 69 in the Dallas Morning News. 69. It was full. I mean, there was like page after page, and you realize it's full every day, the obituaries in Dallas. Every day, the obituaries are full, full. So we all live here. And so it's very important that we understand nobody, nobody is promised tomorrow. Young, middle-aged, older, we've all pretty much got the same time left. And so if you've got a chance to make it into heaven, but uh, take a hold of it. But the, at this point, you understand that when people see that third temple being built, I mean, all of the news media will be there. Every news media will be there. We can, from our Jerusalem Prophecy College, which is on the 12th building of the Cloud Building at 97 Jaffa Street in Israel, we can see, I can see the top of the Dome of the Rock from the building. I'm going to be watching it. I'm going to try to be there, but I mean, there's going to be every news crew you can imagine from around the world because it's been talked about for so long. So there's going to be an unprecedented level of urgency that will engulf Christians and God's true church will be fully mobilized for evangelism. There are people that are going to say, okay, I'm, I'm casting caution to the wind. I just, I'm, going, I'm all in at this point. The church currently is not. I'm in churches all the time, and, and uh, a lot of them are just waiting on something. And I'm telling you, at this point, there's going to be a, an unprecedented level, and it's going to be an urgency. And I know that because I'm, I'm fixing to prove it, talking about a revival. So next, what's going to happen? So that's during the first three and one half years. Well, at the halfway point, remember, now we're on a, a seven-year timeline here. And halfway through, there's going to be a war in heaven. The war in heaven between Satan and, and Michael and his archangels did not occur in the Garden of Eden. I've had a lot of people tell me that. That's not when the Bible says it occurs. It's a future war in heaven. You understand Satan still has access to heaven as we speak. 
saved. I, what, what? Do what? You remember Job chapter 1. The Bible says the sons of God appeared before God to give an account and Satan was with them. So that Satan today, the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. He has access to heaven. That's fixing to end. Revelation 12, 7 through 8. The Bible says, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, which is Satan, and fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven for Satan. Now we're halfway into the final seven years. We're at the three and a half year point. What is Satan's punishment because he fought a war against Michael and his archangels? He's confined to the earth. No more access to heaven, Satan. You're done. So the Bible says in Revelation 12, 12, Hey, therefore, we won the war. Rejoice ye that are in heaven and ye that dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Because Satan has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he hath but a short time. This is going to trigger the great tribulation, that final three and one half years. The great tribulation is not seven years. The great tribulation is three and one half years. When Satan comes down to the earth, the Bible says he comes down having great wrath. And he, he, this, is, this is what triggers the great tribulation. We're halfway through the final seven years at this point. And the Bible says this at that halfway point, that's when the Antichrist is going to be revealed. And people all, for decades, we've had a drawer full of people that said, so-and-so's the Antichrist. This person, look at this article. This guy's the Antichrist. And we're like, look, until this event happens, we won't know. We can speculate. We've got a, a, a list of maybe 10 people that are, we, it's constantly revolving and we move per, this person out. And now that person, they're out of, you know, they passed away or now this one's in. And it's, it's constantly revolving. But there will be a time when I can go on the radio and say, so and so is the Antichrist. And believe me, I'll probably be standing on the desk when I do that because 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 through 4, the Bible says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. That day, the second coming, and our gathering together unto him. That's what the Apostle Paul is talking about here. Except there comes a falling away first. The falling away has already occurred. That's the dark ages. And that the man of sin be revealed. So there's coming a time when he's going to be revealed. The son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he is God. Here it is. This is the abomination of desolation I spoke of. So that he as God sits in the temple of God and showing himself that he is God. He's going to claim to be God himself. Stop the sacrifices. You don't need them. I'm God. I'm the one you've been looking for. I'm the Messiah. I'm uh, the, the, the Buddha. I'm Allah. I'm the ones you guys have all been looking for. The, I'm every, I, it's me. Look to me. And so the Antichrist, he's going to be revealed three and a half years in. So if I'm building a timeline here, and we've got a final seven years, that three and a half year mark, we're right in the dead center. A lot of prophecy happens right there at the three and a half year mark. The false prophet, who is the leader of the world religion that I talked to you about in the end time, whoever the Pope is at the time when the Antichrist is revealed, that's going to be the false prophet, the leader of the world religious system. And he, the Bible says, remember that he will use the, the, his influence to get the religions of the world to follow after the world governing body. I, I don't have my phone with me, but I, I would show you an article where Pope Francis just came out and he just, had, he just spoke at a meeting of the, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund at, calling for us to um, implement glo uh, more institutions of global governance. Well, what's the Pope Francis doing calling for more in, uh, influential institutions of global governance. This scripture's coming to pass. The Bible says, Revelation 17, 3. Uh, Revelation 17 and 18. Again, these are parenthetical chapters about the judgment of the great whore, the, the harlot, the false church system. And the Bible says that John said, he carried me away into the spirit, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, which is the false religious system in the end time, and... She sat on a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So look at this diagram here. The woman, the false religious system, who's the seven-headed, ten-horned beast? That's world government. I just read to you in, in Revelation 13, 
The body of the leopard, the feet of the bear, mouth of the lion, ten horns of the ten horned beast. That's the seven-headed ten horned beast. The Bible says the, uh, the woman, John said, I saw as the woman, re- false religion, is in alliance with the seven-headed ten horned beast, this world governing body. It's this, we're there. They're working in it today. When they have the general assembly, many times the Pope speaks and then all of the leaders of the world speak. They're all in alliance together. And the Bible says that the false prophet will support the Antichrist. The the world religion is already supporting the world government. It's already happening. They're already working together. One more clue that you will learn in the Bible studies is that the color red here, very important. Um, The uh, scarlet synonymous term with red that it's red because of socialism. You, you understand what we teach about the seals, the colors uh, white, red, black, and green. The red is socialistic. The Bible says that this entity is socialistic. The United Nations is so socialistic and communistic, you can't even imagine. Alger Hiss was a communistic spy, communist spy, and he's the one was the architect of the, of the United Nations Charter today that they function of. Not one word has changed. And the United Nations, or the um, Alger Hiss, He was the first acting secretary general. But when you go to the United Nations today, do you see him in the long line of secretary generals? No. They don't want you to know who Alger Hiss was. He was a communist spy. He wrote the charter that they still function from. So it's a communistic, socialistic, one world governing body. The United Nations is not designed just to be some humanitarian organization that feeds people after a hurricane. That's not what they were designed to be. They were designed to govern you and me. And they have goals for us. The sustainable development goals that you hear Joe Biden and everybody talking about that, that you've heard of. Um, have you ever seen President Biden give a speech and he's got build back better on, in front of his podium? You ever seen that term, build back better? That means I am for the sustainable development goals, the goal of the United Nations to govern every pl- person on the planet. That's why all these big infrastructure and all this trillions of dollars they're wanting to spend and in a, in a debate... With President Trump, he actually said, we're going to move off of oil and gas. Now, everybody in Texas at that point probably had a heart attack. We're going to move off of oil and gas? This, that's te- that's the, the foundation of Texas. And we're going to move off of oil and gas. Uh, and so all of that is to help meet the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. It's about wealth redistribution. They can't control the oil and gas industry, so they're wanting to just move off of that. And so it's crazy if you understand really what's going on. Um, so next, at Daniel 11, uh, 32 and 33, the Bible says that the Antichrist will conf- corrupt the world by flatteries. He's going to be a great orator. He's going to be a great speaker. He's going to say, I'm your guy, but it's all going to be a lie. And Daniel eleven thirty two 32 and 33, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he, the Antichrist, Corrupt by flatteries. So what's going to happen? The earth, the, the, the church is going to be hiding, right? Oh, oh, don't, I can't say anything out of the Bible because they're going to cut my head off. No, the Bible says during the time of the Antichrist, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. We're going to have revival during this time. We're not going to be hiding in a foxhole. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. During the time of the Antichrist, But, uh, the Bible says, yet they shall fall by sword, flame, captivity, and by spoil many days. There will be Christians and Jews that are persecuted persecuted during the the tribulation. say, well, I I don't want to hear that. Well, you consider yourself a Christian, right? And look at the, the millions of Christians that have been put to death from the time of Jesus Christ till now. So if I, I can't get to 21 and say, well, I shouldn't have to suffer any. I'm just going to float out of here on a cloud. That's not how it works. Consider your Christian brothers and sisters. They were willing. Now, I'm not saying everybody in here is going to be put to death. It's not what I'm saying. Probably most of the tribulation is going to be overseas because we're not going to be under the full reign of the Antichrist here in the United States. You'll learn that in the Bible studies. But we're going to be strong and doing exploits. You say, well, how are we going to do that during the time of the Antichrist? The same way the apostles did. They were under the reign of the Roman government. Rome ruled the world. And they filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. They set up churches all over that area over there because 
they were having great revival during the time of a world government because they didn't let the world government stymie them. There were times when the, the magistrates would bring them in, beat them, put them in jail overnight and said, we told you not to teach in the name of Jesus Christ. What did they do the next morning? They got out of jail and they went right back up there and they were teaching again. The Bible says they counted it all worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. Look what Jesus Christ did for us. And yet, but some of us say, I can't, you know, I'm going to go hide in a foxhole. Mm -mm. We're going to be on the front lines having great revival. Yes. And there's the greatest time of revival is ahead of us. It's not at the book of Acts. It's ahead of us now. And you're going to see that as I go along. So true Christians are going to leave false Christianity. I know people who their churches are getting caught up into this false religious system. And they don't have a clue. I talk to them all the time. And they call in and they'll say, Dave, I, I, um, you got to help me out here because my church is talking about sweeping some of our doctrines that our church has held to for since the beginning. After they came out of the Catholic Church, there's a, the Protestant Reformation and churches started being established and they picked up doctrines in the Bible and they're saying our church is moving off of those doctrines to align itself with this global religious system, this interfaith movement. And I'm like, y'all going, what do, you th what do you think we should do? And I'm like, y'all are going to have to leave. Unless, you're not going to stay in there and convert them because the Bible says they're going that way. You're going to have to leave and you're going to have to get in a good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Now, this is just the facts. You say, well, yeah, but my tradition and my family and blah, blah, blah. You're going to have to leave. You're going to have to pull out of that stuff. How do I know? The Bible says it's going to happen. God's going to make a plea. Revelation 18, 4. And I have heard this when it's talking about the false religious system. John said, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not a partaker of her sins and receive not of her plagues. God's going to judge this entity because they're not doing what they're doing things that are diametrically opposed to the word of God. And you cannot be a part of that. So, I know these people love God. They're doing the best they can to serve God. They want to follow the Bible. They're doing everything they know to do. But the entity that they've been raised in is pulling off of Scripture and saying, we're going to head after this. This looks awesome and wonderful. It's all in the name of unity. It all sounds great. But at the end of the day, it's all based on a lie. It's not based on biblical foundational principles. And that's something you cannot follow, folks. The Bible's a roadmap to get us to heaven. Anybody that moves off of that, I cannot follow them. Can't do it. Because I want to go to heaven. And the Bible, in the end, the Bible's going to separate, it's going to be a separation. There's, God's not going to sit back scratching his head going, hmm, should this person go to heaven? I don't know. No, there's not going to be any gray areas. God checks your heart every moment. God knows. And I, I want God to look at me and go, Dave Robbins ch made the right choices. He followed me. He obeyed the gospel. He's going to make it. And that's why it's very important. And I know it's a Bible prophecy conference, but I want, when the trumpet sounds, everybody in this room, I want you to see your feet leave the ground. That's the most thing. I'm, it's, it's, that's the most important thing to me. And so whether you, whether you understand one prophecy, if your feet leave the ground, you are a smashing success in this life. Smashing success. I don't care if you live under the bridge down here. If your feet leave the ground when that trumpet sounds, you were a smashing success. Forget your bank account, the, all this other stuff. A lot of people put so much stock in that. There's nothing wrong with having money. But if you are a bazillionaire and your feet are stuck when that trumpet sounds, it, it meant nothing. So your goal is get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life and be ready to go, okay? All right, moving on. So what's Jesus said? Matthew 24, 14. This gospel shall be preached in all the world. The Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. We're doing that, you understand. There are, we have missionaries in just about every nation on the entire planet, and we're teaching and preaching this. I had, I've had people contact me lately from Slovakia, they were watching us on TV. I've had people in China. I had people, some, a couple ladies from China subscribed to the magazine. They got one. And it, they, it went almost like a year. And they're like, we only got one. So I had the ladies uh, at the office check their subscription. They're like, well, we've sent all of them. 
the Chinese government was capturing them. They would not let them, they let them get one. And after that, the Chinese government found out what was going on and started keeping them. But we, so we've got, I've sent products back with our missionaries into China that were holding underground services in basements and garages and all kinds of stuff because the government is thumbed down on them right now. You understand what's going on? And so it's very important. But the Bible says, Jesus said, hey, this gospel is going to be preached into the whole world. Then the end is going to come. And uh, so this passage is immediately before the abomination of desolation when uh, the Antichrist will stand in the temple proclaiming to be God. Matthew 24, 15 and 18. The next verses tell us, when you therefore shall see that abomination of desolation, when you therefore see the uh, Antichrist stand in the temple proclaiming to be God, spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, um, back in Daniel 9, let him, uh, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee. So this is how we know there's going to be another Jewish holocaust. Because these Jews that are living under the Palestinians' uh, jurisdiction as a Jewish minority, which was in President Trump's peace agreement, and he, the, Jesus said, when you see that, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him that is, uh, that's up on the housetop, don't even go down to get your clothes. You hit the ground running. And um, neither let him which is in the field. Don't go back to get your clothes because there's going to be a mass slaughter. Jews are going to have to flee. you got to get out of there. And this is a New Testament prophecy. The Jews don't follow that. Who's going to warn them? We are. Jesus said, let them which have understanding, let them go and instruct others. And so that's where we're at. We're going to instruct them. These prophecies are coming to pass just like this. And so I can't look at them... Irvin Baxter set all this in motion and God showed him that these things were going to happen. We put all these things in motion and then God takes him. So that means we're just supposed to drop the ball and hope somebody else will do it, right? No, no, no. God's dumped the vision on us. I shouldn't say it like that. God gave us the vision. (laughs) And myself, Vince Stegall, all these other guys that you hear and our whole end time team, our family, God placed this on all of us. God gave it to Irvin and then said, okay, now you guys are going to carry it across the finish line. Irvin was tired. Irvin was just tired. And he was 75 years old when he passed. In 2019, when he was 74, he traveled 42 weekends out of the year and did these conferences. And at 74 years old, plus did radio and television, and, and he was rolling, but he wore himself out. And so God said, okay, I'm taking him, and you guys are going to take this thing across the finish line. So guess who's going to do that? All of us. We're all in this together. We're all human beings. We're brothers and sisters, and we're going to take this thing across the finish line. So we need you to get in these Bible studies, learn what's going on so you can help us. It's very important. Now, at this point, three and one half years in, remember, I'm halfway through here. You see all the prophecies that happened at that three and a half year mark? Well, this is when the great tribulation is going to begin. Matthew 24, 21. Jesus said, he just talked about the abomination of desolation when the Antichrist would stand in the temple proclaiming to be God. And he said, for then, you Jews are going to have to run because then's going to be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. So this three and one half years, that's when the great tribulation's going to begin. What are we talking about here tonight? The future, according to Bible prophecy. This, is, this also, at the three and a half year mark, this is when the two witnesses are going to come on the scene. Revelation 11, 3. The Bible says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So these guys, when Satan marches out his two imps, the false prophet and the Antichrist, God says, Here comes my two. And it's going to be the two witnesses, and they're going to be a thorn in the side of the Antichrist. The Bible says they have power to turn water into blood. They can do all kinds of things, and they're going to be preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and we're going to have wonderful, awesome revival. The Bible tells us that. The world's greatest revival during the time of the Great Tribulation. Listen at this. Revelation 7, 9 through 14. The Bible says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. So in uh, Revelation 7, 1 through 8, The Bible talks about the 144,000, the remnant of Jews that will be saved. And then Revelation 7, 9, John says, he's seeing a vision of heaven. 
And he says, wow, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number uh, out of all nations, kindreds, and peoples and tongues. Every, not just Jews, but everybody, all colors, all races, all different ethnicities, all, there's going to be people from every nation in heaven. It's going to be awesome. And the Bible says they stood before the throne, before the lamb, clothed with white robes, palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice and said, salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and upon the lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and the elders and the four beasts. They fell before the throne on their faces and they worshiped God. Then the Bible says in Revelation, um, it's, it's seven. It says, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Be unto God forever. And here it says, one of the elders looked at John and he said, in essence, John, who are these individuals? And John said, I don't know. Thou knowest. And the angels, or the, um, the elders said, these are they which came out of great tribulation. When's the great tribulation? It's the final three and a half years right there before the second coming and the battle of Armageddon. Um, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So the greatest revival, John saw a multitude no man could number out of every nation. And the elders said, these came out of great tribulation. The greatest revival the world's ever known is ahead of us. It's not behind us. There's going to be a time when there is a huge... Well, when the Antichrist comes on the scene, people will either follow after that, or they're going to say, I can't do that. I'm going to go for the real Christ, not the Antichrist. And, but the Bible says most of the world will follow after the Antichrist. I, I hate to even read those scriptures. I love the Bible. But some of those, some of those things, I'm like, I don't, even, I don't even want to read that. And so, but that scripture, I'm going to be one of the ones that's helping facilitate that revival. Very important. And then the Antichrist is going to expand his power over the world. You'll understand some of these when you'll see the timeline here in just a moment. So it's at this point. Remember in the beginning when I talked about the world government being established, the world religion being established, and the mark of the beast, precursors to that. Well, I'm going to show you a time on the timeline when the Antichrist, it's going to become his kingdom, his global earthly kingdom. And now it's being established, but the Antichrist will usurp authority over that world governing body. Now the world religion is being established, but there will come a time when the false prophet usurps authority over that. And then there's going to come a time when the mark of the beast is doled out. That will be a time when I'm going to be on the radio ranting and raving saying, do not do this, do not do this. Right now, at this point, the mark of the beast can't be doled out. Now, if they were coming along trying to put a chip in my hand, that's not going to happen. I know the Antichrist ain't on the scene yet, but I'm not letting a mark of identification being put on my body anywhere. I had people asking me about the vaccine. And... Early on, there were, there were people speculating that it might have dye in it, where they could shoot dye in your hand, and then they could do a phone over it and read all this stuff. Well, that, so simply, that's not the case at this point. But I told them, I said, if they ever do that, that's not going to be me. Now, I'm not, I'm not planning on taking it anyway, unless I have to go to Israel. But other than that, if I'm hoping to be able to get out of that, uh, if taking it to go over there, I think I might be able to use my antibodies to check, check me and do all the stuff. I'm dealing with a doctor on it. But... The, and the, 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 if they were to put a die in that so they could read it with their phone, I'd be like, I can't do that. It's not going to happen. Do whatever you want, but I can't do that because I can't take a mark of identification on my person and I can't pledge allegiance to the Antichrist or his global governing system. You cannot do that, folks. And so you'll learn about all this stuff coming up here on Tuesday night and the, the, the Tuesday nights after that. It's very important. So the Antichrist at, some, at this three and a half year point is going to expand his power over the world, Revelation 13, 7 through 8. It was given to him to make war with the saints. There will be saints that are persecuted during this time. I could take, we, you've, you know that we teach a post-tribulation rapture. We're one of the only ministries on the planet that does that. Why? In the face of all the peer pressure and everything that's going on, why are we doing it? Because we believe that that's what the Bible teaches. And so I understand the origins of all the different teachings and everything. And so that's why we teach a post-trib rapture. We believe we're going to be here during this time. Why? One, of the, one, one scripture of the plethora is, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. If the saints are gone, who's he making war with? Okay, 
Anyway, we got, we, I'm not going, we're not going to the pre-post trip tonight, but anyway. Uh, the Bible says, and, and to overcome them, power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. It's going to be a world government. And all that dwell upon the earth. This is one of my main messages tonight, probably the main. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. So how do you get your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Remember the brochures we talked about? What do you mean born again? When you're born again, you get your name in the Lamb's book of life. So there's nothing more important than this. You understand, the Bible says, all whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life will follow after the Antichrist. So it's imperative you get your name written in the Lamb's book of life. That's why we give that brochure away for free. I've given away, we've given away, I, I know millions of those. We've sent them to so many prisons, it's unreal. Because we wanted those prisoners to know, here's what you need to do. You understand there are full-on churches going on in prison. I, I hope you all know that. I mean, it's some of them places, it's, and I understand it is horrible. But I know, personally, of full-on churches, true churches going on in prisons. These guys are being saved. And it's just, I know that, you know, a lot of things happen there. I, I hate it. But um, there are full-on churches going on, and we're saving a lot of people. We're, we, we work with them. I've sent so many magazines. We've sent so much product into prisons. It's unreal. Um, I just met a guy in, uh, where'd I go? Madison, Mississippi. He come up and told me, hey, what, I was saved. I, we, and he showed me some pictures of himself. And I'm like, good. He just got out of prison for like 15 years. And uh, he married a, a nice young, young lady and they had a great life together. And it was awesome. But God saved him in prison. And so a lot of these, what do you mean, born again tracks have aided in that. You understand? It's, such a, so, it's so important, everybody. Um, so the, uh, everybody's going to follow him whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you even question it, read the brochure. It'll tell you how to get your name in there. It's very important. Okay, so then the Mark of the Beast. Um, this is during, the, the Mark of the Beast is going to be doled out during the final three and one half years. Okay? And so people now say, well, have I taken the Mark of the Beast? I've got a tattoo. No. That's not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast isn't here yet. You can't take the mark of the beast until the mark of the beast is here. Again, because I know the scriptures, I would never let anybody put a chip in my hand. It's not going to happen to Dave Robbins. And so, because I understand the Bible says they're going to give everybody a mark. The Bible says the mark of the beast and that no man in the yellow and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. It's going to be an economic sanctioning system. That's why there's a danger of moving off of cash and the ability to have freedom with what I do with my money and having it be all electronic where somebody can track every move I make. And that's what they want to do. It's tracking, it's surveillance. That's why they want to move you off of cash into a digital society because they can track. You understand, you go down the highway and sometimes you see a factories, they look like factories, they're acres and there's no name, and you, they're big, huge fences, and you wonder, what's that? They're full of servers that are tracking your information. It's just holding your information. These things do exist. And the, all they do is say, John Smith bought gas here. John Smith bought a, a, a thing of lettuce on the way home from work. John Smith used this much electricity. John Smith did this. That's what those smart meters, all this other stuff, they want to track and control you. That's why they do not want you using cash. So we're using the uh, COVID situation to have people use um, fingerless, uh, touchless pay pads now and all this other stuff. And it's gotten out of hand, honestly. But anyway, the mark of the beast. Uh, we watch for precursors to that right now. I talk, we talk about it all the time on the radio. There's many of them. There's two efforts to number every human being on the planet. ID 4D by the World Bank and ID 2020 by the United Nations. Do your research. They're everywhere. And they're using them for all kinds of things. They're, they're testing them out on refugees that have, fleeing, have, have, have fled from war-torn countries. They're testing it out on them and saying, hey, we'll give you a number. You go in this certain camp. Some of them are in uh, Jordan. They uh, fled from Syria 
from the Syrian civil war down in Jordan. They're in these huge camps and they'll set up a grocery stores and stuff in the camps and they'll give them a voucher. Hey, you've got $1,200 in your voucher. Well, they'll go in there and they'll use their fingerprints and their iris scans and it runs through a United Nations database like that. And it says, yes, you had enough money to purchase groceries. Get your stuff, go on. If they've used too much of their allotment for that month, the United Nations database says, no, you don't have enough money. You can't get any more groceries. The United Nations is giving them permission to buy and sell and to, to function in these camps. You understand? It's precursors to the mark of the beast. But the mark of the beast is not here yet. It's going to be doled out when the Antichrist comes on the scene. Okay, you got me? All right. Now, everybody stand up. Stand up and get some blood in your feet. I'm going to, I'm going to take an offering here. And I'm going to pick up the envelopes. So get, your, get the envelopes out. Make sure you got it filled out. And make sure you check the box. I want to participate in this Bible study. Again, you understand, I've got two hours. I'm hitting the treetops. You guys need to get into the deep information of all of this. Let, me, let us do the documentation and everything. It's, the documentation is done. If you come through the Bible studies, it will, it will give you all the documentation. We got it from this news article. We got it from this thing from the United Nations. We did this from the Council on Formulations. You need to understand about all of that. So that way when you watch the nightly news and they start filling you with propaganda and all this stuff, you can say, no, that's simply not the case. And then you can tell your friends, family, and your sphere of influence. That's why it's of utmost importance. So um, we also want to take up a, a good offering. There's some uh, expenses with the, the, having a conference like this, so we want to offset those expenses. And so dig deep. And uh, we're going to give a good offering to the church tonight. Uh, and then put the envelopes in the bucket. Let me say a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I truly thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for each and every sincere individual under the sound of my voice tonight, coming here wanting to know the truth, wanting to know you more through your word and through the spirit that we feel here tonight. Lord, bless this offering. Keep your hands upon each and every one. Bless us all tonight. Bless this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you can be seated. And... Um, We'll have the brethren come. They can take these up. And then I've got just a little bit more, and we'll wrap up. I'll try to get you out of here. I'm pretty sure I can get you out of here by 8 o'clock. Okay. Can you listen while, they, while you give? Okay, yeah. That was a yes. Um, so out on the table, my wife, Janet, is out there. That's Irvin's youngest daughter. And... We brought all kinds of products with us. The newest product we have just prior to Irvin passing away. I'm talking about two and a half weeks, I think. He finished Revelation, the Unveiling of Jesus Christ, Volume 2. It's his last life's biggest work. It's the reason that I, prior to his passing, took over so much of the television and radio production over the last year and a half. Because he told me, he said, Dave, I'm, i got to get this done. and uh, With all this pressing on me, I can't get it done. You take that. And little did I know, God was preparing me for his passing. I didn't know that at the time. I just thought, man, alive, I can't breathe. This is a pressure out the, you know, it's just crazy. But anyway, um, he, he went into kind of like isolation. And finally got, he, he was like, God's pressing me to get revelation commentary done, revelation commentary done. So he did that. There's nothing like it on the planet, really. I've watched so many things. I've had people sending me things from all over the world and Irvin Baxter got the first one done, and then the second one done, he got done a few weeks before he passed. We went on vacation uh, during COVID to um, Florida one month before he passed. My mother-in-law said, hey, we, I, we just, we, I, I want to go somewhere. We were going to go on a cruise. They shut all that down. And our whole, this, she said, I want me and Irvin and the three girls and their three husbands to go. And I, we were going to do the cruise, and... That canceled, so she said, you know, I want to do something. I'm just, something's pushing me. We need to go. This was a month before he passed. And I told my wife, I said, I don't want to do that. That's going to be boring. We're going to go to Florida. We're going to sit there and stare at each other. I don't want to do that. My wife was like, my mom's really insistent. We need to go on this. And I said, oh, man, I don't want to go. Well, I would have imagined I would have kicked myself now if I hadn't went. Well, we all went. My mother and father-in-law, the three daughters, and myself and my two brother-in-laws. 
We had a wonderful time. It was great. I'm going to start crying right in front of everybody. Wow. So I, um, I, we, uh, we went there, and he said, look, he said, I'm just about to finish Revelation Commentary. It's awesome. Uh, and he finished it up just a few weeks before he passed. Uh, he said this is going to, he was excited. This is my life's last big project. He just kept saying that. And I was like, what do you mean? You got, still got, you know, at least seven years left. And uh, he just kept saying that. And sure enough, we got back from vacation. And just a few weeks later, he got COVID. He was in the hospital a week, and God took him. And I look back, and I think, man, the two major uh, prophecy books in the Bible, Daniel and Revelation, they, they, they correlate so much. And um, he did a Revelation commentary, volume one and two, with the two books. Both volumes are out there. Pick it up. I'm telling you, you need to let your family watch it. It's, if, you, if you don't understand the book of Revelation, which a lot of people don't, this goes in great detail. How it's segmented, how it's laid out, how it's not written in chronological order. It tells you how we know that in great detail. So cool. What do all the beasts mean? It's, it's really neat. Um, and so pick that up on the way home. And the other thing that he wanted to do that I'm telling you about that we're going to do is uh, he wanted to teach a Daniel commentary. A lot of people want that. He taught through it in some classes for our JPC. Uh, we haven't, I don't think we've made that available to anybody. So I'm going to teach through that. And we're going to have a Daniel commentary as well that goes along with the, Russia, with the Revelation commentary with the books and everything. It's going to be really neat. That's coming up. But anyway, we've got the Revelation commentary out there on a lot of different things. Stop by the table, talk to her, buy all that stuff and take it home. And... Um, because you, the whole thing is, is for you to understand this stuff, and then you go tell your family, your, your co-workers, your sphere of influence. Everybody has a sphere of influence that may never listen to us on the radio or TV or never meet me or Pastor Shindal or any of these guys, the, the, um, Tony Williams, the, the Bible study teacher here. So you need to, you are the ambassador that God chose to go show these people, your friends and family and sphere of influence this stuff. Because they may never meet us. So when you're at Thanksgiving, you say, hey, I got a DVD you guys have got to watch. And they're like, oh, that's just them prophecy conspiracy theorists. No, these guys document everything they teach. I can tell you, everything we have has been documented, everybody. Everything. If it's an opinion, we say it's an opinion, capital O. Or I'm speculating. Somebody will call in on open line. What about, you know, who's going to be involved in World War III? I'm like, I can only speculate. So I don't know. If we don't know, I will tell you, I do not know. But everything I've told you tonight, I can document. We've got stacks of documentation everywhere. We've got filing cabinets at end time full of documentation for decades of it. And so it's very, very important that you get a hold of sources that you can trust and that has an ulterior motive, not to get you, to control you, but to get you to heaven. So there's nothing more important than that. Okay. So i got a few slides left, and then we'll wrap it up. So... You remember I said that the peace agreement is established and that starts the final seven years. Well, that peace agreement is only an interim agreement. It's seven years. It's not a permanent one. Or they would say the Antichrist confirms the covenant with many. But it says, no, he confirms the covenant with many for one week. We know that that's a week of years. If I had time, I could go through Daniel's 70th week and prove that. I don't. But you'll just have to trust me. It's a seven-year interim period. Well, that peace agreement is going to expire Israel is still going to refuse. They'll get a lot of the other things done. They're going to allow them to build a temple. They'll get a lot of it. A, a, a lot of the rest of it will be negotiated and taken care of. But they're never going to be able to settle on Jerusalem. So Jerusalem, they're never going to settle on that. And so at the end of this interim agreement, they're still going to refuse. No, we're not going to give up Jerusalem. The UN is going to pass resolutions. Uh, has already actually passed one. Uh, under the Obama administration um, that demanded Israel to surrender East Jerusalem. Resolution 2334, I just read about it today with John Kerry. He was influential in getting that passed, uh, getting it implemented. Uh, I should say passed. It will be implemented at the Battle of Armageddon. But this says that the East Jerusalem and the West Bank is occupied illegally in the eyes of the international community. It's illegal in, under international law for Israel to be in that area, to occupy that and control it. Well, God gave them that. Okay, so that whatever the international community says, that's irrelevant to me. I'm looking at what does the Bible say. And so, but they're going to implement, but Resolution 2334 says it's illegal. They're never going to come to 
uh, terms on that. And so the Battle of Armageddon is going to be where the world governing armies come down to enforce resolutions like this. You understand? And it's not just political. The, the, the Battle of Armageddon is going to be spiritual. That's really what this is all about. It's a spiritual conflict. It's Satan against God. And that's where it's all going to culminate uh, right there at the Battle of Armageddon. So Israel's going to refuse to comply. Well, this is what brings us to the seven vials of the wrath of God. Remember what we're talking about here tonight. I'm building you a timeline, and it's the future according to Bible prophecy. So the seven vials of the wrath of God, not the great tribulation. The great tribulation is the wrath of Satan, remember. This is the seven vials of the wrath of God. It's Revelation 16, and many of them start out. It's got, the very first vial is um, God's wrath upon them, uh, God pouring out his wrath. It's grievous sores on those who receive the mark of the beast during the great tribulation period. So these vials do not start until the very end of the great tribulation because it's poured out upon those that receive the mark of the beast during the tribulation period. So it can't be poured out till the very end. Well, so it's going to go down through there. It talks about the seven vials. I won't take time. You're going to go through lessons about this, but it talks about them turning the water to blood. Uh, the kingdom of the Antichrist is going to be dark, uh, darkened. The, earth, the sun's not going to show. The, the sun's going to be given power to scorch men. And then the Bible says in the sixth vial that the great river Euphrates is going to be dried up to make way for the kings of the east to come down against Israel to battle to um, the battle of Armageddon. Well, that's where we're going to join here in Armageddon. The Bible says that the UN armies will invade Israel. Zechariah fourteen two. This is going to be the world governing armies coming down. Ezekiel thirty eight uh, gives us many of the nations that will be involved in that. Uh, Gog and Magog, Russia. Uh, Persia would be Iran, um, Togomar, Turkey. You've heard, in, you've heard recently in the news about the Russia-Iranian-Turkey alliance. The Bible says those are the main three coming down at the Battle of Armageddon. And the Bible says they're in alliance with each other. I've had people contact me and say, no, no, the, 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 uh, Turkey and Israel are um, in alliance with each other. No, they're not. No, no, Turkey's against Israel. Turkey would love to take over Israel. And re-implement the, the Ottoman Empire. Um, so, in Zechariah 14.2, the Bible says, For I will gather all nations to Jerusalem to battle. That's going to be the final battle on earth. This is separate than the Sixth Trumpet War, which has already happened at this point. So, the battle, uh, the great river Euphrates is going to be dried up to make way for the kings of the east to come down. The battle is going to be engaged at the plain of Megiddo in the north. How many has ever been to Israel? Okay, good, several of you, good. So you understand, you ever been up, did you guys go to the plain of Megiddo when you went up in the north? Okay, it's as flat as this, about 15 miles by 7 miles, flat as this pulpit, or this platform here. And this is where many of the battles throughout time have taken place. You understand uh, Gideon, the, Gideon and the Midianites? That took, that took place in Megiddo. Most of the nations in the Bible that were going to invade Jerusalem would come through the plain of Megiddo, and Solomon had his stables up there, and that's where he would engage them. He didn't want them to get to Jerusalem. So he would engage them in the north. That's exactly what's going to happen in the Battle of Armageddon. The Bible says that the battle will be engaged in the plain of Megiddo in the north. And Revelation 16, 16 says, And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. It's the only time the word Armageddon is mentioned in the Bible. And so Israel, they're going to engage. Now imagine the world governing armies, Russia, Turkey, Iran, um, some of the European armies, they're going to come down against little old Israel to battle. Well, Israel's going to go up and engage them there. If, if you, when you guys went to the plain of Megiddo in the north, when we go, I, I've been twice a year for years until COVID, and many times uh, Irvin Baxter would be up there giving his speech on the Battle of Armageddon, and we would have they, the jets patrol that all the time. They're constantly, and then we had jets fly head level right, right behind him, phew, down through that plane of, and it was perfect because right at the right time, boom, they come flying down through there. They're patrolling that. They actually have an airfield that's in the shape of a V where all the planes land and go underground. Because you remember Solomon kept his stables up there to engage the armies. That's exactly what Israel's doing today. They've got a, a whole air force up there that they can engage people that would come in from the north like that. So, because you've got the, the Moab mountains and things over in uh, Jordan, and P Jordan's probably not going to let people invade from that 
direction because they're really in alliance with Israel. They need to be. They need Israel. Israel doesn't need them. Israel's got two or 300 nuclear weapons. They don't need Jordan. Jordan needs Israel. And so um, you got to understand the geographics there. So Revelation 16, 16, he gathered them together into the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Uh, and it, Israel's going to engage them up there, but they're going to be forced to retreat because you've got the world governing armies coming down against this, just Israel. And they're going to they're beat them back all the way down the Jordan Valley right up into Jerusalem. And it's going to culminate. You, you've been to Israel. You understand the Temple Mount, the Mount of Olives, and then the big Kidron Valley. That's where the Battle of Armageddon is going to culminate right there. Started in Megiddo in the north, come down the Jordan Valley, right up into, right up into Jerusalem. Zechariah 14.2, the Bible says at that time that the city, Jerusalem, will be taken, the house is rifled, the women ravished, half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So Israel's going to fight back valiantly, but there's too much firepower. They're, they're beating her back, beating her back, all the way back to the Kidron Valley, and... She's going to look like she's about to be defeated. The world governing armies are just pounding her to death. And her, her, the, 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 uh, the armor uh, boxes are going to look empty and they're just going to be like, we're fixing to get defeated here. And at that time, when Israel, when all else looks like it's lost, Israel's going to call on her Messiah. And guess what happens when you call on the Messiah? He shows up every time. Every time. And the Lord will never fail you. So the Bible says, Zechariah 14, 3 through 4, right after that. Then the Lord shall go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Many of you have been there. And the Mount of Olives is going to cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and the west. And there shall be a very great valley. Half of the mountain shall remove towards the north, half of it towards the south. It's going to be the world's greatest earthquake that's ever known. It's mentioned many times throughout the book of Revelation. The Bible says mountains are going to be moved out of their place. I mean, it's going to be an earthquake. And this is when the Lord comes back and plants his feet upon the Mount of Olives. Imagine this. The Antichrist and the world governing armies will actually think that they can fight against Jesus Christ and win. They're going to battle against him. And, of course, the Lord's going to fight on behalf of Israel. Guess who's going to be with the Lord? We will. The Bible says he comes with ten thousands of his saints. Jude chapter 1. And so Jew, the Jewish people are going to rush out to meet their Messiah. We've been waiting for you for thousands of years now. And in Zechariah 13, 6, the Bible says they're going to notice the scars in his hands. What, where, what are these wounds in your hands? And he's going to say, these are those with which I, I was wounded in the house of my friends. And they're going to recognize, they're going to notice those wounds, and they're going to recognize that you were Jesus. You were the Messiah. They're going to recognize him. Well, they're going to turn to him. They're going to recognize him, and they're going to receive him as their Messiah at that point. And Romans eleven twenty five 25, and 26 says that all of Israel is going to be saved. The Bible says, for I would not. Now, the rapture has already happened at this point. These individuals are going to live on into the millennial reign. But the Bible says, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part at this point has happened to Israel. You say, well, in part, what does that mean? Well, I know that there are, Israel, there are Jews that have been saved today. You say, well, this is the time of the Gentiles. The Bible says they were blinded in part. Most of them are. But I know I've got friends that are Jews that are saved today. And so the Bible says that they were blinded in part as happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in at the second coming. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Okay, so remember I told you I was going to put it in fifth gear? So here we go. I got nine minutes and I got... Eight slides. So here we go. So Jesus, at this point, this is at the end of the final seven-year period. Jesus, when he comes back, he's going to send the Antichrist and the false prophet to the lake of fire. Sorry about that. I'm ahead of you guys. Here we go. Uh, Revelation 19, 20. So a lot of things. Now, what, remember the final seven-year timeline. A lot of things happen at the three-and-a-half-year mark, many prophecies. And then many prophecies happen at the final, at the end of the seven-year period. 
So Jesus is going to come back. He's going to fight on behalf of Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. He also sends the Antichrist and the false prophet to hell. Uh, Revelation 19, 20. And the beast or the Antichrist was taken with him, the false prophet, that wrought miracles before him. And these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. No more Antichrist and false prophet during the 1,000-year millennial reign. That's done with that. They have been so deceptive that God's going to specifically cast them into the lake of fire. So what happens to Satan? Well, God's done with him for a thousand years at that point. Satan's placed in the bottomless pit. Revelation 20, verse 1 through 2. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and he bound him for a thousand years. The Bible says he shut him up. So he's fin Satan's finally going to be shut up. You get tired of hearing Satan? God's going to shut him up at some point. And for a thousand years, this is during a thousand year millennial reign. So now we're beyond the final seven years. We're working on a timeline. I'm going to show you here in just a moment. We're beyond that. We're in the thousand year millennial reign. So we're going to crown at the second coming. We crown Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Revelation 17, 4, the Bible says, that, uh, these shall make war with the Lamb. The, the, the world governing armies are, so get this, they're, they're fighting against Israel. They're at the Battle of Armageddon. The clouds split open. Okay, imagine this. Jesus Christ comes, the Bible says, Revelation 1, 7, every eye will behold him. He's got thousands of his saints with him on white horses. My father-in-law used to say he wanted number three all the time. You've heard him say that. And they're coming out of, the, out of the sky, and the world governing armies are actually going to try to fight against that. I, I never have understood that, but the Bible says, these shall make war with the Lamb, of course, easily. The Lamb is going to overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. These are the ones that have been born again. They're the ones that are going to come back with the Lord. And so what, what else happens? Well, the world government is destroyed. Revelation eleven fifteen. 15, this is at the seventh trumpet. Now remember, we're right here. The Bible says, and the seventh angel sounded. There were um, great voices in heaven saying that the kingdoms of this world, no more world government. Right now, I told you about the world government. The United Nations is the seat of that world government. That's going to be done away with. No more human world governments. Done away with that. The, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Guess who's going to be in the government? Who's going to be in the Congress? Who's going to make up the mayors and all these things? The church. The Bible says the saints will rule and reign with him as kings and priests for a thousand years. So imagine the church ruling the world. Your mayor is going to be a, maybe Pastor Shindal, I don't know. Who knows? You never know. He could be a governor. He could be the president. I don't care. He, I'd, I'd rather him be the president now, honestly. I mean, come on. So then, then this is the millennial reign. Revelation 20, verse 4 through 6. The Bible says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, Neither have received his mark, and their foreheads are in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. You want to be a part of this group. Everybody here, you're working in this life to be a part of this group. And the Bible says, but the rest of the dead. So when the rapture happens, the dead in Christ rise first. The Christians who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet them in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. But there will be some people still left in the grave. People who did not make themselves ready. The Bible says, But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. My father-in-law will be resurrected at the time of the rapture, just in another few years from now. But the rest of the dead, people who were not made, not made it, they're not going to be raised until the end of the 1,000-year millennial reign. And the Bible says, um, this is the first resurrection. The rapture, that's the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part on the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign a thousand years. Everybody who goes into rapture does not stand before God at the great right throne of judgment. You're judged at the time of the seventh trumpet. The Bible says he comes back with his reward to give to the prophets and to the saints. 
So we, we, if you're raised in the rapture, you don't stand before God at the great white throne. You, you don't want to do that. Everybody here, we're going to get our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We're going to make it. Millennial reign on the earth. Now, I don't have a lot about this. I just want to give you a, 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 a scripture about it. Um, there is some about that back in the book of Isaiah in different places. Uh, but the, on the millennial reign, Revelation 5.10, the Bible says, And God has made us to reign as kings and priests, the church, and he shall reign on the earth. If you go back to the book of Isaiah, it's where it talks about the wolf will lay down with the lamb. It's, it's, not gonna be, it's gonna be like the Garden of Eden again. The wolf will lay down with the lamb. Imagine if you put a lamb next to a wolf tonight. Okay, it's dinner. I mean, the, you've got um, the child will play on the hole of the asp, which is a poisonous snake. And I mean, it's just, it's gonna be totally different then. The Bible says uh, a, a person dying at the age of 100 will be considered but a child. Remember in the early days uh, when people were living six, seven, eight hundred years, there will be some people that live almost all the way through the millennial reign. A person, without, you're going to go to a funeral and the, the, somebody says, well, how old was he? Well, he was a hundred years old. Oh, just a child. The Bible tells us this. And so there will be people that be, the, the, the um, longevity of life is going to be extended again in the 1,000 year millennial reign. But I'm going to have eternal life. I don't, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to be ruling and reigning as kings and priests. This is during the millennial reign. At the end of the millennial reign, at the end of the millennial reign, you've got the great white throne of judgment. This is at the end of the 1,000 years. And the, in Revelation 20, 11, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon the throne whose face the earth fled away from and there was no place found for them. This is the great white throne. You've heard it talked about, I've heard it talked about on secular stations, the great white throne. Somebody will mention it. Somebody will mention it as just like a joke, a happenstance. Oh, that, you know, the great white throne, he's going to go before that. But it's not a joke. Very, it's the most serious thing there is. The Bible says, all who are not raptured will stand before God at, and judged from many books, including the Bible. That's why when people talk about, let's just push our doctrines under the rug and we'll let God sort all that out. No, I got to live my life by those doctrines if I want to make it. I mean, I want to talk about them. I want to know about them. I want to know about the doctrines. I want to understand them, and I want to apply them to my life so I can make it. And then Revelation 20, 15, and whosoever, this is the most, listen to me. Okay, let's just, if you don't get anything, get this. Revelation 20, 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So is there, any more, is there anything more important in your life tonight? than getting your name in that book. This Bible study, I know I'm pushing it, but listen, the Bible study will prepare you mentally and physically for the times just ahead, things that you should and should not participate in. And then it will prepare you spiritually for eternity. That's the three things for the Bible study. Mentally and physically for the times just ahead, spiritually for eternity. There's nothing more important. John, are these Bible studies worth it? You've been through, I don't, how many of you, a bunch of them. He, can, he keeps coming back after they're over with. It, he's like, when are you starting another one? I'll do another one. He comes back. It's awesome. These Bible studies are wonderful. I've, got, I've, I've taken thousands of people through these Bible studies, and they're awesome. Because whosoever's name is not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the Bible says they're cast into the lake of fire. I don't want to see anybody in here do that. I want to see everybody make it. So that's why we, we travel all over the United States and around the world doing these conferences. Finally, what's after the great white throne of judgment? Eternity. That's when the human existence done away with. The Bible says, Matthew 25, 46, the righteous life unto life eternal. So what you're doing now, you're making decisions just with the few short years we have left but they're of eternal consequence. You're in a test right now. What the decisions you make. You say, well, I don't even want anything to do with any of this stuff. You've got, the, you've got the right to say that and not pay any attention to any of it. But that doesn't mean that this stuff still isn't going to happen. It's been happening for years. Ephesians 3.21, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout the, all of the ages, world without end. It's eternal. It's never going to end, folks. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.10, eternal glory. Titus 1.2, in hope of eternal life. And 1 John 2.25, and this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. 
Get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, folks. There's nothing more important. Okay, finally. The future according to Bible prophecy. Here we go. I've never seen a timeline like this ever. This is... So, I wanted to start off with the world government forming now. Is that hurting your eyes? Okay. World government forming now. If you want to show somebody a timeline... Show them this timeline because they need to understand the world government forming now, the world religion that's forming now, the mark of the beast system that's forming now. When we talk, get on the radio and we talk about precursors to the mark of the beast. That's what we're talking about. It's not the time of the mark of the beast yet. Then, what's going to happen? You remember the six trumpet war we talked about? The, I don't know if that happens before or after this Middle East peace agreement, but these are the next two things on God's prophetic timeline. Then, once the peace agreement signed, Temple Mount placed under a sharing arrangement. Israel builds her third temple right here in the first three and one half years. This right here to this is the final seven years. This is the three and a half year mark. So the temple's rebuilt, animal sacrifices are resumed. Remember, I told you at the three and a half year point, so a lot of prophecies happen simultaneously. Then at the seven year point, it does again. So at the, at the three and a half year mark, you got the war in heaven. Satan is banished from, earth, from heaven. That's Revelation 12. Satan's confined to the earth. Abomination of desolation, which is when the Antichrist stands in the rebuilt Jewish temple proclaiming to be God. The Antichrist is revealed when he does that. When he does that, that's when I'll be able to go on the radio and, and tell everybody who he is. False prophet supports the Antichrist. That's happening many ways already. It's the alliance, the marriage of politics and religion. They're married already. The, the, the major religions of the world are already calling for world government. Then this three and a half years, this is the great tribulation, the final three and a half years. Uh, the, in the places of the Bible where it refers to the duration of the great tribulation, it says either 42 months, 1260 days, or time times in the dividing time. All of them are three and a half years. There's no such thing as a seven-year tribulation. There is a final seven-year period but the Great Tribulation is only three and one half years. This is when the, the world government's forming now. This is when the Antichrist, it becomes the Antichrist kingdom, this final three and a half years. World religion forming now. This is when the false prophet takes over. Mark of the beast system forming now. The Antichrist is not going to come on the scene and say, okay, i got to set up a global numbering system. I've only got three and a half years. That'll never happen. It's being established now. There's global numbering systems being put in place as we speak. Write it down. ID 40, the World Bank, ID 2020, uh, the United Nations effort with Dakota Gruner is the head of that. I've got so much research on that. It's unbelievable. So this is when the mark of the beast is the implementation of that. Then at the final seven years, Middle East peace treaty expires. This agreement here is going to expire. It's only going to be seven years. The Bible tells us that. Second coming of Jesus Christ is going to occur here. Jesus meets, uh, the Jews meet their Messiah at the Battle of Armageddon. The Antichrist and false prophet thrown into the lake of fire. Satan's thrown in the bottomless pit. Battle of Armageddon occurs. Jesus is crowned king of kings, lords of lords. This is the end of the final seven years. That launches us into the 1,000-year millennial reign, which you want to be a, at ruling and reigning as a kings and priests during that time. And then at the end of that, right here, we have the great red throne of judgment. At the end of the 1,000 year, then eternity. Worlds without end. No end. So, this is what we got left right here. That's it. There are hundreds of prophecies prior to this. Every single one of them has already come to pass. Every one. In great detail. This is all that's left. I've put timelines in the magazine about all the prophecy that have happened. I've given all the dates. I explained all that stuff. This is all that's left, everybody. There's about a thousand prophecies concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ in the Bible, this is all that's left. I have people try to prove, call me all the time, say, well, we're not in the end time. That's all speculation. <laughs> I'm like, I've got so much proof. It's unbelievable. So what's the main message tonight? Uh, back up one chart. Back up one more. Right there on the bottom. This is the main message, everybody. Revelation 20, 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This book of life is mentioned several times throughout the Bible. 
Even back when Moses was arguing with God and he said, hey, if you blot their name out, you blot my name out too. Blot them out of what? The book. And God said, I'll blot out who I want to blot out. But he didn't. The book is all throughout the Bible. Everybody had to either had their name in the book or your name's not in the book. And I told everybody the other night, I was at a Bible study. I said, I want my name on the front. I don't want it to be alphabetical order. Robbins. I want, to, I want Rob Dave. When he opens a book, die, my name's right there in bold. Right in the front page. That's what I want. I don't want there to be no mistake. I, Dave Robbins is there. So that's the most important thing. This Bible study starting Tuesday at 730 right here will, be, will prepare you. It's going to get, prepare you mentally and physically. It's going to go through all these prophecies so you can learn it and then instruct others. And it's going to prepare you spiritually for eternal life. There, there's no point to all this if you don't make it. There's no point to all of it. You cannot understand one prophecy, but if you make it, you, you, that's all there is to this. And so it's very, very important. But one of the things we want to do is to make sure you can tell your friends, family, your sphere of influence, here's what needs to happen. Here's what's coming. We're close to the end time. It gives them a sense of urgency, and it lets you know, i got to get ready. I can't just watch football and have a good time and not even pay attention to any of this stuff. There's nothing wrong with football. But if, if you're just caught up in life and living it and not paying any attention to this stuff, you're missing the show, folks. This is what it's really all about, is make it my name in the book. So very, very important. Okay, uh, take me back to the, uh, the timeline, guys. Just forward a couple, two or three. There we go. So we'll leave it up there in case you guys want to come up here and take pictures and things. Okay, so let's all stand. 8.08. I went over eight minutes. Sorry about that. I told you 8 o'clock, but man, I wish I had another couple hours. Brother Shindall, give us permission to go to 10 o'clock. Come on. Uh, no, I know you guys got to travel and stuff to get you out of here, but um, I want to say thank you all for supporting In Time, for following us. And it's been, uh, last few months, it's been an experience, but God's with us and uh, God's helping us, and it's actually pretty awesome. We've talked to all the people over in Israel that we deal with to, uh, on what's going to happen in the end times with Israel, how we're going to be involved. Uh, we're dealing with the Jewish agency, helping Jews make Aliyah back to Israel. It's awesome. It's a wonderful thing. God's helping us. God has given us influence in Israel. Uh, we're a Christian ministry. But God has given us influence over there, and it's really we're, we work with the Jewish agency. We're one of the only few Christian, uh, Christian institutions that have been allowed to go there to their absorption center and actually where the Jews come when they make Aliyah to get them, um, you know, get them used to being in Israel and get them a job and all this, teach them and everything. We've been there. We've showed our people that. It's been awesome. And so uh, we're not just talking about this. We're doing it. We're living it. And it's going to happen and we're going to be involved. So thank you all uh, for coming tonight. I want to say God bless each and every one of you. I want to say a prayer with you. Uh, before you go. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. I'm teaching these all over and it's been, there's been great response. Um, timelines are fun and they're awesome and wonderful if they're right. I've seen some timelines and I'm like, where in the world did that come from? That didn't come from the Bible. You know? uh, but I want to make sure that you guys know that I've document, all this stuff's been documented for years. It's scriptural. I can prove everything. Uh, so this is something that you can hang on your fridge, whatever. I mean, it's something you can look at. What am I looking at for the future? And this will help aid in the news that you watch because I know there's going to be a peace agreement signed. When they're talking about the peace agreement between the Israelis and Palestinians, you know that there's one coming. And so this is what it helps you to understand these things. So that's why I put this lesson together for this year. I wanted everybody to know what's coming. I'm going to do a DVD on this, um, which will be a lot more structured and uh, it's going to be awesome. So, going to be a lot of other things coming up from End Time Ministries. And I'll be on the Jim Baker show probably after June. Once I shoot my trilogy of DVDs, probably going to be on Jim Baker. I was just on Marcus and Joni Lamb's program the other day. And uh, that went great. And Irvin Baxter was on all these for years, you understand. Well, now they're calling and saying, What's Dave doing? And I'm like, eh, uh, yeah, okay, I'll come. And actually, God is helping me. Uh, it's been awesome. The Marcus and Joni Lamb went great. And so it was. I'm thankful for that. And it's only because God's got his hands upon me. It's not because I'm anything, nothing. It's, got, it's because God is moving on our ministry, and I'm so, so thankful. I, I don't really care. TV means nothing. I don't care about being on TV. I, I just want to win people to God. 
But God has said, okay, because you've got that mentality, then I'm going to help you and I'm going to bless in time. And that's what he's doing. And it's awesome. And it's spreading around the world because God knows that we just want to share the truth with people. I don't have an agenda. No, zero agenda. My agenda is get you to heaven. That's my agenda. And I don't want anything from you. I'm just here to get you to heaven. I'm a man of God preaching the truth. And so that's what we need in the end times. We need people who will stand in the face of adversity and teach the truth. So I'm so thankful for that. Another thing, I'll make a plug for the church here. If you don't have a, uh, a good home church that you attend, in the end time, I understand this because I, I, I run in this circles. There are... Uh, there is huge peer pressure on men of God to move off of biblical doctrines because they don't, um, you know, it's not going along with the tolerance of that the society is pushing them into. Let's just all be tolerant and let everybody get along, blah, blah, blah. No, the Bible says don't, you can't do that. You're not going to make it to heaven if you do that. So there is peer pressure. There's lots of pressure from society for a man of God to move off of that. So I've known uh, Pastor Kevin Shindall for years and years and years and years. And my father-in-law actually turned his church in Richmond over to him for several years. So I, if you're looking for a good church, I would put a plug in for this one in this area. I don't know where you live, but this is a great church. And you can, um, if you're looking for a man of God who will not move off of these doctrines in the end time, which will be invaluable, this would be a great church to attend. If I was down this area, this is where I'd be going. I'm li I live clear up in uh, Plano right now. We go to a church that's like 10 minutes away in Garland. But um, if I was down in this area, this would be a good one if you don't have a church that you attend. Uh, plus, the Bible studies, um, just because you come to the Bible studies doesn't mean you're making a commitment to come here. It means I want to know more about this stuff. I want to be saved. I want to be, and you say, well, I'm already saved. I don't have to come to this. That's the, you need to understand the information so you can go tell other people. Say, I don't understand about the world government. This Bible study will teach you all about it in great detail. I just hit the treetops today. So um, very important that you go to a true Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church in the end time. It's of utmost importance to you and your, uh, where you spend eternity. It's very, very critical. So thank you all uh, for joining us tonight. I, wanna, I, I really appreciate that, and I know that Pastor Shindall does as well. Look forward to seeing you Tuesday night at the Bible study. You will love it. It's going to be so awesome. I've done hundreds of these. They've done it at this church many times uh, with great success. So... Looking forward to that. Let me say a word of prayer with y'all. And uh, you got anything else besides? Okay, so I'll say a word of prayer with y'all and then I'll let Brother Shindall uh, come and dismiss. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. I truly thank you for the sincerity in everybody's heart coming here, wanting to know the truth. We love you, Lord. I want to serve you. I want to share the truth. I want to know the truth. I want to make it to heaven. I want my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I know everybody here does as well. Lord, help us to accomplish this. Help us to do your will in this life and to serve you and to get our friends, family, and sphere of influence, Lord, to get them on board with this as well. Lord, because I, we're talking about eternal consequence here. So we love you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you for everybody. Put a hedge of protection around them. As they go from this place tonight, keep your hands upon them. Bring us back together next time that we might know you more through your word and through the spirit. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, and we appreciate you tonight, and we lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. He, uh, the pastor's got one more announcement here. Great information tonight. We're so thankful that you have been with us. Just two quick things. One, I would like Tony Williams to wave his hand right there. He has been teaching our class here locally for years. How long do you think? Yes. 20 years. So he is well-versed. He's shown the videos many times. He could teach it himself. And so he is such a fantastic Bible teacher. So you want to get to know him. You're welcome to meet him before you leave tonight. Also, just a little instruction. If you do come on Tuesday nights, you can come at 7 at 7, we have, from 7 to 8 here in the sanctuary, we have the lights down low. We have prayer time. And so the whole congregation comes, and we have our all-church prayer meeting. So you're welcome to come. It's kind of come and go. And then uh, at 7.30, the class is on the north end of the building. If you come straight to the class, you can come in through entrance E. Every door has an entrance number or a letter. This is entrance A that you came in tonight, and so it goes uh, up that direction. And so at the end, it's entrance E. So just a way of instruction. 
And uh, we're so thankful that you're here tonight, and we can't wait to meet you and get to know you more in the future. God bless you. Uh, make sure you stop by the table on the way out. Amen. God bless you. Yes, put the timeline back up, please. Yes.